Hi, I'm Space Boy. And I'm Sir Lana. And you're listening to Space Boy Universe. On the Paranormal UK Radio Network. This is Patrick Stad Spore, and you're listening to Space Boy Universe. 32 minutes, 21 seconds. Five second tone followed by a one second pause. You are listening to Space Boy Universe. Okay, gang, let's go. Strap in and prepare for launch sequence. Greetings and salutations. I am your lovable Space Boy, and across from me is the lovely Sir Lana, and this is Space Boy Universe. It is January 19th, 2019, and we're on show number 3.16. Tonight is random topics from the universe. Uh, we had a guest, but we'll explain a little bit later what happened. And uh, it's all good, though, because you, you've tuned in to your dynamic duo. <clears throat> As always, follow us on Twitter. That's at the SB Universe. Follow Serlana at Serlana. Follow me, Spaceboy, at Spaceboy Music on Twitter, that is. Make sure to hashtag your tweets tonight with hashtag SB Universe and hashtag Space Cadets. In addition to Twitter, you can find us all over social media. Just search for Space Boy Universe. Hey, kids. You'll want to check out the uh, YouTube channel. We do more than just the archive of shows there. There is video content from SB Music, video interviews, 2-Bit Gamers, and so much more. So hit that subscribe button and click that bell to be notified when new content is available. And uh, you'll be pleased because there's always content coming down the pipe. Can't catch a show live? No problemo. Take the SBU on the go with you via Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, iHeartMedia, and Spotify. Because, man, we are all over the web. Uh, so on this magical note, I'd like to bring in my lovely co-host while I take another bite of my ham sandwich. <laughs> Hello, Serlana. How are you? That Am I on? Yeah, you're on. Yeah? Okay. That ham sandwich is so important. I guess at the next break, I might see if I have any turkey left and make me one. Mm-hmm. If not, there's always PB and J. So, um, yeah. As usual, I want to remind our listeners we're live right now. Of course, when we're live, we invite you to come and participate in the live chat on Spreaker, where we're broadcasting from on Spreaker.com. Hey, Sir Lana, I, I don't mean to interrupt you there, but uh, has there been any new updates to the chat program? I'm trying to, if you'll stop that and let me get through this. Um, now, alternatively, you can go to spaceboyuniverse.com. The Spreaker player is right there embedded on the landing page, and you can start listening from there. Jump in the chat by clicking the little moving chat bubble. Or you can come to spaceboyuniverse.com, click on our menu where it says SBU chat, and get into our embedded chat on the page. The player is also embedded, so you can listen, but chat below in our fun chat where you can actually put links links to videos you can upload images and you can also put gifts in there from the little gif selector um pick your own picture with your own avatar all you got to do is go to spaceboyuniverse.com go to our go to our menu go to the chat and you will be asked to agree to our terms that i typed up you know and you'll see what those are just no adult content of any kind don't harass anybody don't private message someone and start messing with them 
um, because they'll tell us and you could be banned or kicked so just you know get in there and behave and have a good time and uh, so you can Participate later. Speaker.com, where we're broadcasting live right now, or our website, spacemanuniverse.com, or both if you're crazy like us. We're watching both chats. So, all you got to do in the embedded chat on our website is uh, down there where you type your message, you'll see a paperclip icon. If you click that, it will allow you to put an image from your computer. Mm -hmm. up there please keep your images pg pg 13 we don't have to ban you so we don't have to kick you or ban you or report you so right now we've got our usual crowd <laughs> in there and we don't have to worry about them because we know them space cadets mm -hmm. but uh, let me try something here no does it work no let's see space. so let me do a quick shout out to our space cadets there uh, good evening to bob and bev i hope that the snow is i guess it didn't get them is uh has uh did not put you under and uh good evening to our uh fan of the show k28 um we're so happy you're there and uh, what about i don't want to give up uh speaker um uh, people uh let me make my way back there um uh, who's in that chat he popped in but i think mm -hmm. he's kind of dividing mm -hmm. his attention mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the chat is is so definitely uh, the way to go. We've wanted it this way. Oh, there's a picture, I guess, of Dino. Um, Dino the dog. The dog. Um, um, yeah. Because we wanted it. Uh, we wanted something very interactive like this. And uh, uh, when you go to the chat room, we also embedded the uh, Spreaker uh, feed on the very top of the chat, so you could play it. You can so. play it and not miss, you know, miss mm -hmm. out on anything right mm -hmm. there. So it's um, all right there. Yeah, K twenty eight is making tiramisu. Um, we can be there in what eight hours? <laughs> Probably more than that. <laughs> Twelve hours, twenty four hours. You don't want to take a plane. No, um, never again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So be feel free to join us in either chat room. We're watching both of them. You don't. We don't expect you to come to both. I know some people prefer one mm -hmm. over there. It's just that the chat that we got. We first of all, I like it with a dark black background with mm -hmm. white text, so it's easy, easy on my on, eyes. Easy on the because eyes. you and I are are tech people. Our jobs are technical, and we stare at white mm -hmm. screens all day in fluorescent lighting, and it just hurts over time. So it's so easy on the eyes. So that's another one reason we do that. So, but you know, pick one and. Yeah. Off you. So. To each their own. I'm trying not to get to the big topic. I want to save that for the meat and potatoes. So tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. January 20th. January 20th. How to watch the only total lunar eclipse of 2019. The wolf moon. Tomorrow. And yeah, it has the weirdest name, the super blood wolf moon. I don't know if this means... Where select people will turn into vampiric werewolves. And it's only going to be seen by people who live in North and South America for once. We have a seat, front row seat to the whole thing. So during the eclipse, the moon will turn a creepy shade of red. And I will not get into the biblical implications because I know that's not what we're here for. But... If you're interested, go look up the biblical implications of blood moons and you will go hide under the covers till it's all over. Well, so I'm reminded of the movie. Uh, what was that movie with Demi Moore back in the 90s? Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, uh, the that's tickling my brain, though. Um, God, I, I kind of know what you're Bob, I know you're a movie kind of sort of like me. What's the name of the movie with Demi Moore and the prophecies and uh, she has to hide. She has a baby or something, and something about the uh, the Gulf is empty, and so somehow her child needs to. I, I don't know. It's it, it's a movie, and, and part of the prophecies was the, a red blood moon. We've had three of them, I think, already, and that's mm -hmm. like if this isn't enough in your face, um, world is going to end. This is like apocalyptic stuff. I think it was mentioned in Revelations, but mm -hmm. again, we're not here for that. But so anyway, this eclipse is more special than the usual because the moon's going to be a bit closer than it has been in previous Which eclipses. Which will give the appearance that it's larger than mm -hmm. usual, like if the moon was following on Earth. 
yeah, they're creeping up. It's creeping on us. It's mm-hmm. gonna it's scare you. So it's going to. Um, this is where the Earth gets between the Sun and the Moon, and we cast the shadow on the Moon. Yeah, supposedly it's the uh, harbinger of the apocalypse. Yes, as they say. Well, it's 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 more than one. It has to be like a series of them. So. Uh, light that will sneak past Earth is mostly reddish orange because the sunlight has been scattered. That's why it becomes oh, sorry about blood that. red um, because of the scattering that comes around the sides of the Earth. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the same reason why our sky is blue during the day and or reddish orange during sunset because of scattering. So it's super. Does it mean it has superpowers? Well. It's the same old moon, but it just means it's going to be bigger. It's going to look, we're going to perceive it as larger. Um, the distance from the Earth changes throughout our orbit and the moon's orbit. So the supermoons are when the moon is about 225,744 miles away, making it seem 14% bigger and 30% brighter than your regular old run of the mill every day moon mm-hmm. so what is the super blood wolf moon what's the heck the, the wolf part just means that it's a full moon so we're all going to go out and howl at it too so not only is it an eclipse not only is it going to be blood red not only going to be bigger and brighter but it's going to be full so and every time we talk about an eclipse i will never get total eclipse of the heart out of my head so the indigenous tribes here in North America kept track of observing full moons, uh, and they would give names so they could differentiate what type of, you know, state the moon is in, what type of eclipse it was going to be. So they supposedly the title refers to all the wolves that howled in hunger outside the villages in January, according to the Farmer's Almanac, which has been around what forever and a day. So um, you don't have to say super blood wolf moon. You can just say regular old lunar eclipse, but that is just not as good. And I really think you should consider having super blood wolf moon tattooed on your body somewhere because that's just cool. Um, Make it your new user screen name. Bet you won't see that. No one will see that coming. Now this is going to get started tomorrow at 936 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon enters Earth's penumbra, which sounds really naughty. I hope it gets Earth's consent first. Um, the moon will start to dim. And then one hour later at 10.33 p.m. Eastern, the moon will enter the umbra. And com- the bulk of the Earth's shadow, that is. And things will get juicy, they say. <laughs> you know, look like half the moon has disappeared. So stick it out for 11.41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when it gets fully immersed. So what is that central standard time if it starts 9... 30 ish eastern is Nine, it eight it's eight eight Just for us subtract an hour so we don't have to stay up like no, you it, know. you'll be able to get the well it'll be like one hour past your bedtime if it's cloudy though it's all bets are off and of course we're we're probably situated in a, a subdivision that we can't see a daggum thing um so 9 36 10 33 1.50 a.m., 2.48 a.m., so it's between 9.30 and almost 3 a.m. tomorrow. Those are Eastern Standard Times, but um, this is the only total eclipse of the heart, I mean, excuse me, total eclipse, lunar eclipse of the year. There's a partial one in July, but who cares about those, especially when that can only be seen from Africa, Europe, and parts of Asia, so, you know. Uh, this is your best bet, and North and South America will get the best seats. And as you know, somebody will videotape it, I'm sure. So no need to worry. Um, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see um, what happens with this blood moon thing. And, uh, you know, because, uh, yeah, um I wish I could remember that Dane movie. Well, you could go to imdb.com and put in Demi Moore, right? Uh, hey, there's Gene. Yes, he's give, he's put, putting his poetry in motion. 
K28, <laughs> like a little kid. Did you see the latest thing I did? Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? <laughs> you want us to put it on the fridge while we're at it? So cute. All right. Now, I, I tried to find topics that talk about technology, pop culture, music, gaming, French science, but it doesn't always work out that way. There's not always interesting music. There's not always interesting gaming because we're so freaking old. The movie's called The Seventh Sign. There you go. I remember that, sort of. Yeah. Sorry, I put my uh, drink down. Basically, uh, Abby Queen is eagerly awaiting the child, uh, awaiting childbirth, but is haunted by dreams where she suffers a, a miscarriage. When she decides to rent a room to a mysterious stranger, she realizes a chain of events that will unleash the end of humanity. Uh, so, and in that uh, part of it was the uh, blood moon, uh, the mm -hmm. part of the signs. Thank you for that. Um, so I got something that might interest you over there. Dolby made a secret app for recording studio quality audio on your phone, but it's it's not quite out there. But what an interesting thing. Um, so the Dolby Corporation, or you know, has been quietly testing this mobile app for recording and cleaning up audio under the code name two three four. And it's um, it was available through a website sign-up form that lets you record audio and then cancels background noise. And you apply some presets on it to theoretically make your recording sound more professional. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I always love it when Dolby blinds me with science. So, you know. Uh, Two different Dolbys there. I don't yeah. think that Dolby's related to the other Dolby. Still, they blinded us with some new Although science. for a long time I thought they were. Science tech. So, you know, it's like having your own producer in your phone. Uh, like I said, a few people were able to snag this app because they would, I guess it was like a beta sign up thing and then they took it away. Yeah, uh, they said the app was incredibly easy to use. You just tap a record button and the app measures the room tone for a few seconds before starting the recording. And when you stop recording, you can quickly polish, quote unquote, the audio through adding presets and tinkering with a few tools. I would think so it's you like, would have fun with that. It's like Photoshop. Well, uh, my... Uh, I mean, I, not that you do a lot of I phone recording. I don't do a lot of live recordings. I but mean, what if you could? Well, I probably... I don't know. I like being able to master my stuff through... What if you're at a concert? Well, I mean, I guess that's one way you could use it. I mean... Uh, anyway... Yeah. um. I, yeah, I don't know what the real world applications of using this application <laughs> would be. What are the circumstances you'd want to record ambient audio? I mean, it has its things, you know, like garage band type, uh, you know, groups that do, you know, like recording sessions like that. You could do on the fly, record a quick demo, you know, of live. Yeah, I maybe mean, you could just make it and make it sound as good as you possibly can. Right. And, you know, it's, you know, it's a great use of technology so it would be great for recording something that's happening something's going down and you can like i guess clean up the audio mm -hmm. in why bother news spotify will reportedly release an in-car music player later this year rumored to cost around a hundred dollars i don't really know why they want to do this if it's on your phone now so it's a, maybe some people don't understand how to connect your phone with your stereo if you never bought so they're creating their own stereo it's a for physical your, yeah it's a physical device well isn't that what i use my phone for yeah i'm trying to think who is this for i'm looking at it i don't know if this is a prototype but it looks kind of like it's stuck to the air vent you know your little vent so later this year they may release it it's it's teased this before that's kind of like when xm came out with their own little things devices that you'd use a uh a cord to plug into your stereo well this is a, their spotify's first hardware device to deliver music more directly to customers instead of going through apple's carplay or google's android auto and so, you know, but those are only found on your newer vehicles. So this will sync car stereos through Bluetooth if your car stereo has Bluetooth. Um, 
mine didn't because it's 14 years old, but we did put an aftermarket stereo system in there that does recognize Bluetooth. So it, you can do it with more cost. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's going to include buttons you can preset to correspond with your favorite playlist, voice command support, like like the app has. Other harder features like storage capacity will let the off well device will offer LTE cellular connectivity. That part's unknown, but having a, a device that can be left in the car at all times could be more convenient than fiddling with your phone during you, you know. So yeah, taking pictures of clouds. I mount my phone on a cell phone car mount on the dashboard and I angle it. All I have to do is reach over and tap. And I don't have to sit there and hold and, you know, do anything. I get it ready. Don't get mad, bro. So I'm, I'm doing it as safe as I can. And um, I'm 46 years old. I started driving at 18 and I have not been in an accident where I was driving. And so you need to put a comma there that says Y-E-T. Yet. I do live and drive in Houston, so it's just a matter of time. The law of averages will catch up with me someday. But um, designing devices for Bluetooth compatible stereo systems gives Spotify a wider base of potential customers. I like Spotify, just in general. I do pay for it. Um, I like that it has access to indie stuff, things, and it, it will go... Like you, if you listen to this, hey, we found similar things. We found more stuff by this artist, and they'll show it below. Honestly, know? I don't remember the last time I bought music because of Spotify. Because of streaming services, yes. yeah. I mean, I could just click it and play something. And I also, well, see, I pay for YouTube Premium app, YouTube subscription, and because I pay for YouTube, I get the YouTube Music app for free. And that's a whole separate world there. I've not really gotten into the YouTube music thing. You, you probably wouldn't care for it, but I mean, I can use it for exclu just exclusive now playlists for sleeping, you know. Yeah, I, I pretty much listen to YouTube for news, as funny as that may sound. It does sound funny. Uh, because uh, I can get various opinions of the news on, on YouTube. We can circle back to that later about okay. news and opinions and what sure. stuff. I, I put a pin in that. We talk yeah. about that later. Is a BuzzFeed going to come up on that? Yeah. Kay. It's going to be after the other big topic we're going to talk about later. Um, you know how we've talked off and on about how Netflix, you know, it's it's a private company and it can does it, like any company do what it wants to do or not do. They, no, they never release numbers like mm -hmm. how many subscribers they have. How many people have watched this? They've always kept that to themselves for whatever reason. Well, now that Disney's streaming service is looming large in this year, Netflix shares its huge numbers for its original content. For example, Bird Box, which is an original Netflix uh, movie. Mm -hmm. Was it a one-time thing? Yes. Okay. It's an original movie. It reported that Bird Box accrued more than 45 million unique account streams seven days after its release. It has now surpassed 80 million views. There's another thing over there called You, Y-O-U, a lifetime series that Netflix purchased the rights to, will surpass 40 million household streams within the first four weeks of its release. The same goes for Netflix's new, new original series, Sex Education, which uh, Netflix accounts for 10% of all television viewing in the United States. That's big, mm -hmm. considering they're not network television, they're an and, app. And, and they just came out with The Punisher. Um, to kill it. Uh, yeah, to kill it. <laughs> to kill it. Uh, there's another show that I'm in, in, interested to dive into. It's called IO, um, where people really? leave Earth because it's become so toxic. And so they're trying to leave Earth to go to, uh, to IO, which is, which, is, Gillette which is a moon out there by, by Jupiter. Yeah, yeah, IO. Okay. Just checking. Make sure, I mean, you, we do explore the universe. I mean, I just wanted mm -hmm. to make sure you knew your planetoids. And um, so uh, 
d- keep that finger down. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that, no, nope, not going to do it, not going to do it. Yeah, you came disrespectful. close. Disrespectful, it's disrespectful. You came close to giving me that finger there. I, I, I gave you a, a mental flip off. That, that yeah, but I caught it. That's the point. The point is that the, a lot of good programming coming to Netflix, and, and they've shown time and time again that, you know, even though Disney's leaving them, um, you know, it's still... I recently got to uh, watch a, a Black Mirror episode. Mer? I'm sorry, it's my Texas accent coming out. Black Mirror? Uh, hey. Okay, I'll, I'm waiting for you to start getting your twang on. So I'm from Louisiana. I don't have twang. Uh, but anyway, so um, where you get to pick your own adventure. Yeah, choose your own adventure. Yeah, and so Netflix has a, a program where you can pick your own adventure. Well, I we all know Disney's got something coming. Interactive, right? yes. I forget that Warner Media is also trying to do some some streaming service to launch sometime this year. No. Oh. NBC, Universal, and Comcast are also working their own service. It's like, well, crap. Well, NBC. <laughs> we is, had cable, and then you know it's NBC just, you know, is a part of that. Yeah, the NBC, Comcast are the same thing. That doesn't even account for things like CBS All Access and Hulu, which have seen spectacular growth over 2018. See, finally people are starting to understand a la carte. And, and Who view, is this Hastings guy? Hold on. View when you want to view it. Reed Hastings is the CEO um, of Netflix. Okay, so Hastings, that's his name. Listen to this, what Hastings says. We compete with and lose to Fortnite more than HBO, Hastings says Hmm. in his letter to the shareholders. Our focus is not Disney Plus, Amazon, or others, but how we can improve our experience to members. So that tells me they're losing it to like either Twitch or YouTube, Fortnite. Um, Twitch is the streaming, and then YouTube would be the one where it's already, you know, been played and they're showing it or the dreaded tiktok videos Uh, (laughs) i guess tiktok's the new vine um so the majority of netflix subscribers are based internationally actually and they're gearing up to invest even more heavily in original content around the world so netflix has got their own goals seemingly independent of the competitors Mm -hmm. i don't know if that's just what their lip service is or what but it's all about providing content, good content, original, even, you know, the stuff that's being canceled on Netflix that's going to be Disney-based. I kind of wonder if it's going to be reborn over in Hulu, you know, the more adult-looking, like Punisher whatnot stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Netflix has added approximately 9 million subscribers since its last quarter, and they are set to increase prices. Now, what do you think about that? Well, I don't have a problem with that because they're obviously, you know, it's like an investment. If you pay a little extra money, they're channeling that money into paying for better programming, original programming, like Birdcage. Uh, Bird, Birdcage. Well, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of what? a different one with Robin Williams and, um, <laughs> the, you know, Bird Box. And, uh, you know, so... Uh, I think it's all good. I need to say hi to Catalina and Martin in our speaker chat. Um, I'm busy reading stuff off, and I'm trying to go back and forth between the two chats. Remember, uh, just a quick reminder, you can always chat with us live when we're live in our speaker chat. Or come over to SpaceBoyUniverse.com, look at our menu, go to the chat. We're having uh, embedded chat over there, too. Mm-hmm. You pick what you like. We're in both both of them. Meanwhile, so. we're getting all these pictures of uh, uh, do- uh, Dotsons and, uh, yeah, dogs you know, and whatnot. courtesy of Bev and so, um, uh, so Dino and Roxy, uh, you know. But this streaming thing, though, mm-hmm. is a hot market, streaming services, streaming content. Apparently, Walmart was trying to redo some streaming. Mm-hmm. Walmart's had an online streaming video service called Vudu, V-U-D-U, for quite some time. When we were first getting into buying movies online, we did the Vudu thing. Yeah. And, in fact, we do have a few videos on Vudu. Yeah. 
But that's when the, the, the competition was either Amazon or Netflix. And that was it. And so at that point, you know, we, we saw the virtue oh. of going to Am, uh, Amazon and the rest is history. So I'm getting the finger of time. I'll, I'll pick this up when we come back. Sure. Because we got lots it's, of time. It's topics from the universe, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, and at some point we'll open up the phone lines and life will be gravy. So don't go anywhere. author Jordan Root. You are listening to the Space Boy Universe. This is K-28, and I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hi, y'all. This is Lori calling from Texas, and I love listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange, and you're listening to Space Boy Universe. This is Wendy. I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, y'all. This is Lorelai DeLille. I listen to Space Boy Universe. Don't you? Tell your mom and them I said hi.
you are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Ronnie. All right, we're back here. Sorry about the delay there. Apparently, Serlana had to make herself some dinner, and uh, uh, I had to, you know. I failed to see how there being nothing on air is anything to do with me when you run that part of Space Boy Universe. Oh, so you're going to shift the blame back to me, huh? You're the tech part. Uh, meanwhile, you wouldn't let me get my tea on. I was just saying, could you move so I can get in here? And have somebody in here. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, take we're back. Left off. You know, it wouldn't be a show unless uh, you didn't hear us complain in one way or another. Well, so. I apologize. I was a little thrown off because our guests had to cancel, and I don't have a show prepped. Sorry. You know that so is I'm making it up. As that is a terrible picture of of Kay that's in the chat room. Uh, apparently. Uh, what Earth, in the Samuel? He got hurt, uh, I guess, 25 years ago when they had an earthquake. <laughs> he was hurt 25. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I'm sorry. He was hurt 25 years ago. Of course, there's a picture of Bev there. I apologize, Kay. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at you. Are you all right, Kay? It, it, it almost looks like he's a test pilot and he got hurt or something like that. Anyway... I just want to make sure Kay's not upset or offended. No, he knows better. He he knows we love him. I love you like a check. I love you like a brother, Kay. See, <sighs> well, I have to be careful because you know. Yeah, you know the world we live in now. You the, just don't know. Yes, exactly. Is that going to lead to any topics? Okay. Well, we were talking about streaming. Yes. Right. Yes, I have a mouthful of sandwich. Well. We were talking about Voodoo, which Walmart owns. And they've had Voodoo for quite some time. I don't know how many years, but it's been years, yeah. right? Yes, it's been, so, a lo- it's been a long time. You still have a login. So what they were going to do was, I don't know if they were going to get rid of it or keep it, but they had these. They had this idea, Walmart did, to launch a new streaming service that would compete, ha, 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 with Netflix and Hulu. And they were aiming their service at, quote, unquote, middle America. Okay. However that's defined. Because they saw the success of Roseanne's reboot. If she hadn't opened her mouth, they probably would have been still doing it right now. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show you, stop having opinions or stop sharing them. Uh, So, but what they found out is that investing in content is risky uh, the retailer would be enter- entering an already heavily saturated market with Amazon Prime, Hulu, and Netflix. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they acquired to- Voodoo in 2010. And Disney Plus, which is coming which down is coming, the pipe. And the things are coming. So that platform is doing moderately well selling pay-per-view it, digital it, videos. Here's my, here's my problem here with this, okay? Follow me on this. Mm-hmm. All right, but so they've ab- but so they've abandoned this. They've decided not to do it and just keep Voodoo. And and and, and the reason why you've got okay, Hulu was like the trendsetter because it kind of Hulu was it used the, to be free. Well, Hulu was the first innovator of the streaming service, and it was an inevitable inevitability. Excuse, excuse me, I'm getting a heart attack right now, um, <laughs> oh, so I'm what? slurring my words. Anyway, so. Um, it was inevitability that Netflix would grow into a streaming type service because eventually, you know, they had the, you know, buy mail, you know, get your, your videos. And then they started streaming certain movies that you can get. And then eventually they just opened the floodgates of the different content that, that they have uh, with original content. So they had, in other words, they had content. Mm-hmm. The Hulu had content because they were getting their stuff from the networks and they made agreements with like Fox and various others. And which is interesting because now Disney owns a big stake in Hulu. Mm -hmm. So it'll be curious to see what happens to the future of Hulu as we go to the future, because you know, you got the Disney plus service. Uh, It might be the more risque content might go to Hulu versus. uh, Well, the more not, well, if there is such a thing as risque, the more, adult oriented mean things that 
your teenager or your under 10 years old are not interested in or it may not be appropriate like the punisher if they were to bring back maybe they throw it over on hulu you know or jessica jones or you know well that's you know believe it or not that's mcu content yeah but disney will own it and disney owns hulu yeah but they're also think about it they're also doing the loki series and the scarlet witch series so uh it'll be interesting to see how they, they they program that out also, um, Star Wars content, too. I saw something about Star Wars recently, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, oh? Yeah. Was it about the Ma- Mandalorian? Or no, was it, it was about something about... Ryan Johnson's head looking like a big balloon? <laughs> <laughs> I forget what I see. I forget what I see. Um, You're holding back because it might be something related to The Last Jedi? Or the fact that... It's something about the upcoming one. Or the fan film that uh, has done phenomenal uh, and then how they copy striked it and then the supposedly LucasArts came in and uh, said... Uh, not Luc- LucasArts. LucasFilms came in and said, hey, remove that copy strike. Oh, it, it had to do with gaming. It was a gaming topic bit with Star Wars. Really? Um uh, more interest. EA. Uh, I was getting ready to say EA milking their uh, customer base. EA more. canceled Star Wars games to rush another Star Wars game. Hmm. Um, they're licensed to play to release Star Wars games. Um, probably because their license is about to to yeah. run out. They they scrapped the open world Star Wars game in favor of newer smaller scale Star Wars title instead. Um. EA has gotten persistent negative reputation lately. Mm-hmm. Is this like EA, EA Sports? That's mm-hmm. the same one? Yeah. Is Electron- that right? Made uh, Need for Speed. and yeah, Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts. Okay. So their, their bad reputation are getting stems from the troubling trend of rushing titles to get released, I guess, well, before. The last thing they got, uh, I guess, uh, nicked on was uh, um, in, in game purchases. And they're all nick, guilty of nick, that. Nickel and diamond. Well, you know, that's the trend with all software. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you know, I, I hate to use a game that might be not relevant anymore, or maybe like Candy Crush. Well, uh, you know, that's still out there. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can in, in game make it's purchases. Every, it's every game. It's yes. every game. Like, Unless hey, you buy you it want, outright. You want to finish this game or this level on? Uh, well, just pay 99 cents. and. Yeah, the only games I don't get in at purchase nags is my Steam games. You purchase them and I play them on the PC and that's, that's it. You've purchased them. They're, you're mm-hmm. done. But my games on my phone... Oh, well, you want to continue? Watch this video. Purchase some tokens. I'm like, no. See, that, see, that's why the mobile gaming is like why they went to go to mobile gaming is because they can make more money. Make more money off. Of if mobile the game's games. good enough and it gets you hooked and gets you addicted, mm-hmm. you will like do what you can to get exactly to keep going on, and make those purchases, and yada yada yada. So, so I guess Star Wars Battlefront One and Star Wars Battlefront Two were both rushed and poorly received, so they're not. I guess they're not vetting these games before they release them to see if they're good enough. Um, so they, they, I don't know if this is just the trend is like, hurry, 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 get it out, get it out. I don't know how any game can get any uh, interest or attention when Fortnite's dominating, you know. Mm-hmm. But it says here in another uh, article rogue one writer wants disney to pull star wars license away from ea yep now is this the same thing or is this something similar let's see gary witta the co-writer of rogue one and former editor-in-chief at pc gamer interesting says electronic arts is mishandling a one-of-a-kind star wars licensing deal and it's time for disney to pull the plug on ea uh, the reason they're doing this, it comes after EA's poorly received decision to cancel that Star Wars game I just talked about. So they've had exclusive rights for five years to publish Star Wars games. This is EA. Mm-hmm. They failed to upload their end of a 10 year deal with Disney. So it might be time for Disney to cut their losses with EA. 
And it, it's coming down to where Disney's finally realizing that bad press is not going to help them financially with Lucas Films. Mm-hmm. So where they're, 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 you're starting to see a trend where they're slowly coming along to cut the dead weight off of uh, Lucas in general um, with their properties and games and things like that. Well, they say EA's canceled as many Star Wars licensed titles as it has published. Mm-hmm. Um, they canned um, a project called Ragtag. They halted um, something else, uh, leaves EA's release cycle with whatever EA Vancouver is being ordered to rush out, respawns Star Wars Jedi Fallen mm-hmm. Order, and clearly neither of those are safe from cancellation. So in the eyes of Gary <laughs> Witta... That's unacceptable, and that's grounds for Disney to revoke the rights that they're giving EA. So he said it's thir- he, he's frustrated, and he did a video interview, and he referred to EA as an embarrassment. He said take away their license because it's been catastrophically mismanaged, and Star Wars was the crown jewel of the video game franchise mm-hmm. licenses. If I was an EA shareholder, I'd be effing, quote, furious at the way it's been handled. So, yeah. The, yeah. E, e, it's, Volatile. And, what, and what's sad is EA, you know, uh, kind of a great company as far as uh, video games are concerned. But uh, they've really, you know, they've really Ryan Johnson did, you know. So, but um, what, no eye roll over there? Uh I can't spell apparently. You can't spell apparently? No, there it is. It's a two or Well, I said, you know, we didn't have gaming news, but there's one piece of gaming news that I have you and I have seen over and over and over, and we failed to, to, to talk about it, and I just realized it. <laughs> if you don't know who Soldier Boy is, oh. <laughs> he's like a hip-hop artist that had one hit, um... Crank that? Yeah, crank that. So go look that up. And he's it's spelled S-O-U-L-J-A boy. Soldier boy. Not to be confused with S-P-A-C-E boy. No. So he decided to come out and put his name on a bootleg cheap console gaming setup. Mm-hmm. And a handheld setup. Uh, Soldier Boy selling game consoles that aren't really his. This is back on December 10th when this came out. Uh, last person you expect is now selling self-branded game consoles, or rather he's reselling cheap emulators that aren't uh, up to snuff. Uh, here we go. Atlanta-based rapper responsible for the 2000 hip-hop hit Crank That is now moving to the game hardware business. So he also has Soldier Game Handheld and Soldier Game Classic. And um, I guess this is like the equivalent of going to Big Lots and getting a video gaming console. <laughs> and it's this bootleg stuff that your grandma would get you when you want a PlayStation. <laughs> and, you know. So uh, the, the handheld game he's got comes with 3,000 unlisted games from libraries of other official handhelds like... Nintendo Switch, 3DS, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sony's PS, PS Vita, and SNK's Neo Geo, which I've never heard of. Neo Geo. So, uh, kind of like ripped bootleg content. So, that's the, okay, that's the first thing he did, right? Mm-hmm. So, how many of those did he actually sell? Well, I'm trying to find the actual number, so they need to track it, so... There was a Twitter meltdown and a tweet storm. Those, there's been like, he may, they've maintained he sold 5 million copies of the console, but those tweets have been deleted. The claim that he sold 5 million u- units. So, uh, oh, there's a copy of all the tweets. Uh, of course, you can't get to the facts there. But anyway, so the next one is Soldier Boy Store Pulls Game Consoles, a lawsuit coming. Again, this is on December 31st. I thought Nintendo already slapped his hand. So it appears that he's pulled the consoles from his store, Soldier Watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, his real name, by the way, is DeAndre 
Cortez Way, W-A-Y, Way, uh, also known as Soldier Boy. He began selling these consoles. They were absurdly priced, shoddy emulators. I still kind of want one now, but I don't want to pay for it. So, um, yeah, so he had these. He said he, they sold 5 million units. I'm kind of likely to believe it because there's plenty of suckers, you, you know. So he tweeted something. Soldier Boy tweeted, Nintendo ain't going to do S blank, 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 blank. Nintendo decided to call his bluff, and earlier in December, they threatened him with a potential lawsuit. They informed him they may charge him for violating trademark counterfeiting act with all the games on his emulators. Now those consoles have disappeared, along with his bra bra bravado. Apparently, he had some homophobic threats for some of the things he was saying, I guess, on Twitter. So now the consoles are gone. And I guess the threat of a lawsuit was enough to uh, get that taken off. Now, here's the January 13th article. It says, Learning Nothing, Soldier Boy is now selling a PS Vita or Vita ripoff. I'm not sure if it's Vita or Vita. Vita. Vita is Vita. Um, like in PETA? Okay, Vita. So he started peddling the handheld emulator that looks a lot like Sony's PS Vita, which I didn't know existed because I'm really out of it. Uh, he has learned a little. He's being a little bit more discreet about what he announces and where he announces it and how he does it. So uh, that's going on. He realizes that upsetting Nintendo is out of the question. And I guess, you know, poking the bear is never a good idea. And there, there's a there's a actual picture. Oh, it does look like PS stuff. Mm -hmm. It really does. So it comes shortly after the online gossip was he was accused of using crack cocaine. Um, I don't know what that one's got to do with the other, but he's not off <laughs> to a good start in 2019. Be resell of cheap again. This handheld's a resell cheap emulator like the console. So now. Here we are, January 17th. Soldier Boy's Soldier Watch website was hacked and it's still down. So, oh, well. that's, you want to talk about social justice, the people take it in their own hands to deal with it. So, um, he's been, he claims he's been hacked and taken down. Who knows? You know, the storefront's unavailable at the time of this article was published and that. The whole thing seems like an illegitimate venture, and he may still be in that legal trouble with Nintendo. So he's under fire still, and with the blatant visual ripoff from Sony and the games from Nintendo that have been ripped off and the pirated ROMs, uh, there's rumors that there's more legal action about to take place or going on. So he reported on the 17th of this month, he decided been hacked. He refers to his distractors as nothing but the devil. He seems to be maintaining an otherwise positive outlook that the issue will soon be resolved. It's just, this whole thing is so weird. He's like, he had one hit wonder. He came out of nowhere. He's been in obscurity. He's like, I'm going to sell crappy consoles. And, and, and I, I don't know. It's just so, it's just so weird. Um, they're saying Sony, who owns, you know, I guess, PlayStation, is not known to be quite as litigious as Nintendo. So Sony's is not as quite as quick to sue somebody because Sony is vast. It's Sony is a huge corporation. It's bigger than Nintendo, I would, I would posit. But um, it could be, this could be a way to let his store just fade away. <laughs> you know, it could be part of a elaborate... method on his behalf to, to try to get rid of it so mm -hmm. anyway i just thought that was funny to me just some bootleg gaming consoles and whatnot um anyway just thought i'd put that out there let's see what else we got um i found a little news article that will intrigue you space boy i'm listening and so is the audience dmc is resurrecting one of the most famous cars. Who? What is it? 
Who's resurrected? DMC. Uh, DMC would be DeLorean. It's not really. I mean, th- they have a place of facility right here just, in Houston, just north of Houston. It's here. the only one. Yeah, and so the DeLorean Motor Company, DMC, is bringing back the DeLorean car that was made so popular three decades ago by revamping the engine and giving it a new lease on life. The current CEO plans on turning the DMC headquarters into a new factory for the newly resurrected car and is being used to repair and restore originals back to their former glory. So, uh, it, if you recall, they had to declare bankruptcy in 1982 and John DeLorean was, wasn't he taking drugs or something and misappropriating? <sighs> yeah. Of course, the DeLorean's film history. Um, the resurrection, I'm looking at concepts. They would be, it would look different. It would be more even futuristic. It would still be that gray steel, but it would just be more cut and a little bit more angular. Mm -hmm. It looks like it may still have the gold wing. Um, The plans to bring it back to the world with original, they have enough original parts to build 350 to 400 cars straight away. He wants to bring back some of the ex Lotus staff to help re-engineer the car, particularly the engine and change it from a 130 horsepower to a modern three, to 400 horsepower that's not a lot of horsepower 130 is it anyway they won't be cheap uh cost for a new one could exceed one hundred thousand dollars they don't have any best specs on regulations and guidelines yet uh there's there's a nice black and white picture here of the manufacturing floor of the original ones Mm -hmm. them being you know built side by side And it's not robots that are building them. Uh, They said with enough planning, they could re-release this car and it could go smoothly. Um, The downfall, that was the downfall, the original release that they didn't, it didn't plan and it wasn't organized. So they went from zero to to 22 months. (laughs) It was rushed. Everything was rushed. The original, Mm -hmm. when they originally did it. So they're looking forward, but. They don't say where they're going to do it. Probably, well, all those, all the parts because they bought they're all here, the parts. Right? They're here. Yeah, the original the parts were like in uh, Ireland or something like that, and so they brought all the parts here to America. So they've got where they can, you know, what is it, uh, old new stock or something like yeah, that? Yeah, old new stock, new stock that's never been opened, but it's been sitting around for years and exactly. years, and decades. You know? uh, things we've learned from uh, pickers. Yeah. New old stock. New old stock. That's it. That's what my phone is. My iPhone is new old stock. I purchased a new 6 Plus when I had the opportunity to get a 7 or a 9, and I didn't want that. So, oh, one more little bit of streaming when we come back, and then we're going to get into a few more things, and then there's a big topic we want to cover mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. So, I know we're at a break. Yes, we are. So, let's uh, take that break. So long. Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. Hey, Sir Lana! What? If Space Boy Universe was cheese, would you eat it? Uh... Come on now, it's a simple question. Maybe? Spaceboyuniverse.com <laughs>
you are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Ron. Okay, we're back. Back. From outer space. Yeah, yeah, we're having a great, great time. I sound like I'm drunk. I'm not. Um, I'm just trying to find my spot. I forgot one little. I didn't organize my links correctly when I started the show, but there's one more little piece of streaming news that I kind of just, it kind of makes me want to go, whatever. <laughs> YouTube now streaming free movies to lure you away from Netflix, but... As I think we talked about before, free with ads. And why would you want to bother if you've already got a paid subscription elsewhere, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess if you don't want to pay for anything, right? So we are now, I think when Disney gets here, it's going to be Stream Wars. We're starting the era of Stream Wars. You got Netflix, Amazon, Disney Plus is coming, Hulu is already in Disney's back pocket, Warner Media, HBO touting a service, CBS has all access, um, Criterion Collection has something Crunchyroll that's anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, gosh, what else? You Comcast, NBC threatening something. <laughs> that feels like a threat to me. Um, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I don't see Twitch as a competitor to YouTube. Twitch is more for live streaming, although you can put pre-recorded media and then stream it live. Don't forget, Twitch is also for thoughts. Yeah, well, Twitch is also owned by Amazon. Mm -hmm. So how do you, um, YouTube's trying to figure out how to cater to Hollywood and its creators, which I say that's a false statement. They're not trying to cater to the uh, creators at all. That's hot. Because <laughs> of a little, a little thing that begins with the letter D, and it's called demonetization. Won't get into it now. We've already done that. So, in the meantime, they're they're saying this article saying YouTube is throwing every dart at the board to get attention back on them, other than their controversies. So they're they're licensing a ton of movies to stream for free with ad breaks. So like traditional TV that we used to have, um, there, there's more streaming out there than I can even list. There's some I don't even know about, but anyway, so some of the movies you can see free on YouTube with ad interruptions is the original, the Terminator, legally blonde, Rocky, uh, a slew of martial arts films, American independent films, and documentaries. And, uh, but you know, you'll be interrupted every, I don't know, however many minutes to watch an ad. Mm-hmm. So it just seems like, why? Why bother? I don't get it. I really don't get it. So that's just one more thing of the, now we're going to keep, we're going to keep in the pop culture theme. And we won't spend too much time on this because I know m- most part, the only person who has a lot to say about this is probably Space Boy. But I'll get into it by starting with this article called Why Ghostbusters 3 Took 31 Years to Make. <laughs> you want to just jump in now or should I give you something to get upset about? Well, you know, it, it usually goes pretty good when you give me something to be upset about. But uh... So... Let's just take a step back to say that the the one that came out with the ladies was not in that universe. It's not canon. It was considered like an offshoot, a remake, a retelling, alternate universe maybe, like the Star Trek ones, like that's the Kelvin timeline. Mm-hmm. So that wasn't was that was not an official Ghostbusters sequel. They're talking about Ghostbusters three an official sequel. The original came out in 1984 and it was sort of like a gathering of once in a lifetime actors and filmmakers to produce something special and it had an enormous success. Now, I think this is maybe the 80s where we had this plague of, hey, it worked the first time, let's try it three, four, five more times. They certainly do it now, but I think the 80s feels like it's when that crap started. (laughs) Well, actually, they that was kind of people. A lot of a lot of people point back to the fandom 
uh, in general that went sour on movies uh, kind of point back but, you to know, this. Ghostbusters movie. was truly original film. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I had not seen anything like that before. You mean the revamp with the ladies? Or? No, the uh, the 1984 release film. I had I don't think there's anything quite like that. You no, know? no. But uh, you know the thing is that uh, uh, no, I lost my train of thought. Uh, well, I'll get you back. Uh, we we did cover uh reviewing the ghostbusters with the the ladies and we things. did that we did that and and at the time i did said i didn't really have a problem per se with the ladies taking over you know good for them i you enjoyed know. the film it's just the problem was chris hemsworth stole it from them and i don't think he meant to it's just that he was just he out acted all of them unfortunately and he because he can sing he can dance he can be funny and it's not fair, and he can be good looking. So I think we need to smack him around a little bit. Anyway, so the original Ghostbusters from 1984 was, of course, an enormous success at the box office and the merchandising. Oh my gosh, you remember the merchandising? We won't mm. talk about your bitter ecto cooler mm. debacle. I got my drink on. So it raised questions of the sequel because it was so good, but the principal cast was not interested in a sequel we're talking about they were not interested in ghostbusters 2 doing ghostbusters 2. so what you've got in the meantime an animated series came out called the real ghostbusters to keep that franchise alive this is the 80s that show and i used to watch it i was getting ready to go to school and they would re-air it when i was going to community college it was sharp it had good comic timing and writing atmospheric scares um so that kind of kept the buzz for it going there's like oh we should capitalize on this and go back and make that ghostbusters 2 so they did make a ghostbusters 2 and somehow they managed to convince bill murray to be in it because you have to work hard to convince bill murray to do anything apparently of course it was a hit but it came out during the crowded summer of 1989 at the same time as tim burton's batman Indiana Jones and Last Crusade and Lethal Weapon 2. So it didn't gross as much as the original. So the consensus is Ghostbuster 2's was too much of a retread of the original, coming out five years too late to capitalize on the first film's success. So the third film was just not even going to be possible after number two didn't quite measure up. Also, unfortunately, co-star and writer Harold Ramis passed away in 2014. So that absolutely put an end to it, other than Paul Fe Fe Feig's or Feig's 2016 reboot. Now, that 2016 did not meet the studio's financial expectations, and they said the Ghostbusters 3 project would be something that would be having a tortured history, and why did it take 31 years to even talk about it? So, um, Dan Aykroyd wrote the original scripts for both movies, one and two, as Ray, he played Ray Stance. Mm -hmm. um, I think he was the one who kind of formed the group in the movie, didn't he? So, he's, the franchise lets him mine his fascination with science and the occult which i think he has in real life so ghostbusters 3 if anything yeah, dan Aykroyd yeah. is you know he's UFOs, he's UFOs, French UFOs. Science. yeah he's definitely into the so if anybody's been trying to keep ghostbusters 3 alive it's dan Aykroyd. he had first crack at the script for the third movie um he said that it can be summed up uh, as this ghostbusters 3 hellbent Ghostbusters goes to hell, basically. Right. Found a team heading to a mirror version of Manhattan, dubbed Manhattan, uh, spawning out ghosts due to overcrowding, like a prison. Mm -hmm. Gang would meet in evil mirror versions of themselves and go up against the devil, a Donald Trump-like figure named Luke Silfer. The whole premise uh, of what they, you know, what I heard uh, sounded pretty cool. So they did a couple of drafts, I guess, with the script, one with the original team, and then one that introduced a younger version of each of them. Murray, of course, was not enthused, but agreed to a cameo, which 
they all had a cameo in the 2016 one. Mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd played a cabbie. Even uh, even Harold Ramis, they re, they brought him in as a sta- a bust, a statue, mm-hmm. which I thought was kind of sweet. Yeah. Harold Ramis stated the dream plan. He would direct Hell Bent, you know, back you know, when he was alive. And they, they were going to have Ben Stiller and Chris Rock for the younger versions. Hmm. The new blood, rather. Right. Aykroyd thought Alec Baldwin would be great as a villain. I think so, too. I think he's a villain just in real life. <laughs> so then later, Aykroyd said he wasn't interested in producing this because it's too pricey. So the plans to resurrect Ghostbusters uh, for an animated movie around 2008 was pitted around. But against the ever-reluctant Murray, was more willing to do a voiceover, but that never came to fruition. They did return for Ghostbusters, the video game, which I never saw. Um, and a lot of people say the video game storyline is kind of like, you know, the you know getting the closest you could get to a... Yeah, they said the video game was the third movie that never happened. Right. So working on the game reignited some of that mis- nostalgia in, in Bill Murray, and he admitted... He's now more open to Ghostbusters 3 after that, right? Excuse me. So, again, the duo had written Harold Ramis. They had a project together that they intended to pass this torch on. Um, Other than Venkman dying in the first act and later appearing as a ghost, and his adopted son, Oscar, becoming a ghost. Now, Oscar is Sigourney Weaver's child from the second movie. Mm -hmm. So Vinkman, I guess, adopts him as his son. Right. So Ray and Egon would have had supporting roles, but Ray having gone blind in one eye, neither of them able to carry a proton pack, so the script would have to bring in four new recruits, three guys and one woman. So 2013, Ivan Reitman was going to come back and direct Ghostbusters 3. They pitched it as Ghostbusters Alive Again. The draft featured Vinkman dying, becoming a ghost, uh, Columbia students would end up taking the Ghostbusters mantle. Vinkman would have a son named Chris with Charlie Day and Jesse Eisenberg to play one of those guys playing it. Zach Galifianakis, Rebel Wilson, Jonah Hill were considered as team members with Sasha Baron Conan being eyed as a villain. Uh, Sasha Baron Conan is a very versatile mm-hmm. English comedic actor. You might know him as Borat uh, or Ali G, you know. So the development was going pretty good, and then Harold Ramis got ill, and he passed away in 2014. So Reitman decided to step down, felt he couldn't make the sequel. Soon we got that all-female reboot. And then, of course, Bill Murray not wanting to do anything was a huge barrier to the third. He Murray actually pitched this whole thing differently on a completely different idea for a second movie that involved Sigourney Weaver getting kidnapped and taken to Scotland where there's a huge underground civilization. Dub, Murray dubbed this version the last of the Ghostbusters to rule out a third movie. So he was trying to kill it before it gets in, in the second one. And and in our original conversation we had, after, or I guess you could say it was our Ghostbuster review mm-hmm. of the new movie, uh, I said that uh, to the effect that uh, they had their chance to do a movie. And if Bill Murray didn't want to do it, then, you know. Yeah, so his Murray's issue was his belief that another movie couldn't possibly top the original. That's why he didn't want to do a second one. So Ghostbusters 3 was finally sc- scrapped. Murray would eventually do a cameo in the, the 2016 reboot where he's quickly killed off, presumably to rule out a sequel return in, in that 2016 world. Mm-hmm. The 2016 Ghostbusters was expensive to produce, and it underperformed at the box office. So that also put a nail in the coffin for Ghostbusters 3, even though they're not in, you know, officially in that and, world. And a lot of that points to the fandom did not, was not happy. They did not make a movie for the fans that wanted, to, you know. Yeah, well, they didn't make a movie for me. I'm a fan of Star Trek, and those reboots, Kelvin Timeline, that wasn't for me, but I watched them anyway. Mm-hmm. And I said my two bits, and I got on with my life, you know. <laughs> so, um, excuse me. Ivan Reitman teased an animated spinoff that was in development following that 2016 movie. But little's been heard about that project. So, 
Jason Reitman would direct Ghostbusters 3 if they were going to do it, which aimed for a summer 2020 release. That story time would revolve around four teens, two boys and two girls, to become Ghostbusters. Dan Aykroyd actually spoiled this reveal back in November, given his history of crying wolf with the third movie, nobody believed him. So is it happening now? Yes, because there's a, a trailer out there well, promoting the 2020 release of Ghostbusters. For one, they're saying the Ghostbusters franchise is simply too valuable to let it sit on the shelf for another 25 years. Mm -hmm. Following the surprise success of the Jumanji reboot, Sony's like, let's dust off some old favorites. And so this is why you're getting Men in Black International and Bad Boys for Life. Life is spelled L-I-F number three, which is weird. <laughs> so after you get through the morass of the 2016 Ghostbusters, here we're down to them hiring Jason Reitman sends a clear message that they're returning to the legacy. The cast has not been renounced, but Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson feel like safe bets. I think Ernie Hudson has said that he was definitely in. What else is he going to do? What else is he doing? Curiously enough, a recent report suggested Aykroyd and Murray are pairing together for a cameo in Zombieland 2, which is another Sony project. And I believe Murray had a cameo in Zombieland, the first one. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. Perhaps a return appearance by Dr. Venkman in Ghostbusters 3 isn't just a pipe dream, but that is why it has taken Sadad Gum Long for you to get number three. I mean, it's it's the perfect vehicle for them to hand the torch over to a younger generation, and that's what should have been the movie is like, hey, look, uh, here here's the torch that's being pass passed on, and uh, um, and uh, I think that that's what the fans wanted. And uh, kudos to Sony for actually following up with that. Because they recognized that uh, the fans were not happy. I mean, and and let's go back in time, shall we? When with the uh, um, the hate haters out there on the social media, um, you know, just putting everybody down in this movie, and uh, I think that was unwarranted. I mean, sure, you, you're unhappy. It's kind of like how you said, "Hey, I'm not happy about it. Uh, I watched it. It was all right." It's not like what I wanted to see, but my life goes on kind of situation. And I know yeah. you, you probably look at me every time I bring up Ryan Johnson in the Star Wars Last Jedi movie. I'm trying to give you validation. <laughs> that is your thing. That is what you like. That is what you love. That's what you're passionate about. You care about it. Far uh, be it for me to invalidate me, I, your existence. Do you think I'm a Star Wars hater? I think you're a fan. You're like a purist. No, he's sitting there wearing a Star Wars T-shirt. He's got a stormtrooper helmet, and it's like covered in leaves. And what? It's not marijuana leaves. Just <laughs> leaves. I guess it's like a tropical motif. You are a Star Wars fan boy, but you're a purist. Like I am Star Trek. You like your canon. You like everything to be. Whatever Lucas's vision was is that you're on board with it. You don't want this messed up with um, social and, justice and, more and, and agenda, politics and agenda agendas agenda. and and you know. And I'm on board with you. It's just that I've outgrown, or maybe well, well, I've wait just. Wait a minute. What are you saying here? That I don't I'm, know. Saying I'm I, a child. No, I've moved on, or I've just there's just nothing left for me in that franchise that I care about anymore. I'm interested. I'll watch the movies and like. Hmm, because now I'm watching things from a different perspective than the my childhood. Now I'm looking for hidden meanings. I'm looking for what are they trying to are they trying to say something else other than tell this story? I mean, you know, did, I'm looking at it for conspiracy things. Did Rob so, corrupt you? <laughs> yeah. So it's just there's nothing left for me. I I've moved on to series, I guess like Better Call Saul and Stranger Things, which is coming up, and uh, and if I'm not watching any of that, I'm reading, 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 reading. I have something on my phone up right now. I'm reading in between talking and typing, and 
Uh, speaking, I can do all that. speaking of Rob, I just wanted to give you some kudos. You did such a fabulous job. Oh gosh, when, last last Saturday. Last Saturday, when we were going to support Solaris Blue Raven and listen to Rob, uh, uh, Robert Sullivan the Fourth, um, and uh, and of course Solaris uh, got the same issue that we had gotten with Robert Sullivan with uh, Skype. Man, and, Skype does not like the Eastern Seaboard of this country, does it? But uh, you were actually able to, in essence, fill in for... Well, we had pushed our whole broadcast up an hour uh-huh. so we could go participate in her live chat. Mm-hmm. And that's all we intended to do is just you know offer some questions and kudos and participate. Yeah, and, and support we weren't so- trying to get... Support Solaris, basically. Is yeah, because we she weren't trying us. to get involved, but... She had the same technical issues with Skype that we had with him in Skype. So we was, when we rescheduled him and he was on our show, we used a completely different piece of software to connect with him. We abandoned Skype. Zoom. We, he had Zoom and we had Zoom. So we, we used Zoom and there were no issues. So we were telling – I was telling Solaris all this in private messenger. Um, and she says, well, are you all there? I said, yeah, we're – connected to skype yeah we're just hanging out we're just hanging out so she pulled us in as impromptu guests and i said well i know this is robert's show but and i read his book let me tell you what i learned from his book and i just pulled up my notes Mm -hmm. from our show some of the things we discussed and she says dang you really know everything about said no i just read one book and i i'm on board with what he does and I, i think it's fascinating and uh He's writing, I, I promoted the heck out of him. I said, he's writing a third book on cinema symbolism currently, and I'm really excited about it because he's going to talk about Metropolis, which we kind of touched on, and he didn't want to get too far into it because he didn't want to spoil mm-hmm. too much. And I said, so we're definitely going to have him back, but we'll probably be using Zoom. Uh, so mm-hmm. um, you, we both did pretty good because we were back and forth. So. That only took however well, long it took. I thought know, we were only going to be there like 20 it, it minutes. It doesn't take much for me because, you know, I'm a Solaris Blue yeah. Raven fan boy. And so, you know. But I thought she was just going to have us on for like 10 or 20 minutes. and But she's like, I guess her went, main content was gone. Well, so, I mean, you know, you were on a roll. Uh, well, what and, I did was I, because I'm on the computer, I keep the notes. Mm-hmm. Um, I went, it pulled up show notes from previous shows and this was the, this had been the first time we talked to her since the new year rolled around so i brought up my 2018 2019 document mm-hmm. i said well this is the first time we talked in the new year um we did a prediction show review show i said what do you feel about this coming up so i tried to keep it fresh and relevant mm-hmm. you know i tried to talk about we talked about the dangers of 5g and she definitely knows about when signals come into your body and what they can do and, right you know we talked about all that stuff and I thought it was a good conversation, given that there was no prep right. for it on either of our sides, other than these are shows we've done recently and it was still in our head, right. you know, and, and that kind of thing. So, no, I I think it was, I thought it was a great show, and uh, you know, I I've joked with you uh, like uh, you being Rob's fill in, but uh, I hope uh, he's not annoyed. Uh, maybe he doesn't even know. Hopefully, he appreciates the fact that uh, there's somebody out there that. Uh, uh, has a grasp of his material and uh, uh, really enjoyed. Uh, I think that stuff is fun. Mm-hmm. Looking for the meanings like that. I, it's like a game to me. Maybe that's well, not the right attitude. Well, but I look at it as from the perspective of your mind is opened up and uh, you're more receptive to look at things with a different light. Now. Well, I don't know if we, I think we told her this. I said, what, what was interesting is near, near the end of our show, we talked about, um, as I've, I've dubbed it the butt hurt culture and that we're all living in this world where opinion is everything and the truth means nothing, the mm-hmm. post-truth world. And he agreed with us because we're all the same age. We lived in that time mm-hmm. before cable, before the internet. We've seen, we've seen iterations of society and it's right. like the matrix refreshes to keep us occupied right. with nonsense. You know, so that's how I said uh, I could take his stuff and apply it to real world scenarios, you know, so. It went quick, you know, a two hour show does go quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we've got 30 minutes and an hour left and I was gonna do a couple more, but I don't know if 
we want to save that to last because they're they're pop culture. Do we want to let's go to keep, the break and come uh, back and talk about the big? Let's go ahead and take the break, and we'll just continue this gravy train and. Uh, We'll talk about the the hot button issue coming back. Oh, yeah. Hot button issues are coming down the pipe. Hot buttons. Hot buttons. Hot buttons. Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. The epic battle begins this Friday, Friday, Friday. Direct from ringside at Laser Death Melt. And Bot vs. Bot in Galaxy's Two-Tongue Weight Championship. Where your challenger, Good Bot, will face the reigning champion, Bad Bot. You are terminated. Reserve seating starting at $30. Two drink minimum, where ladies don't get in free. This is an SBU production. You're listening to Space Boy Universe.
Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lum. I wish I had ran and got some water, Sir Lana. Yeah, we, we actually stayed in the studio this time. We didn't leave during the break. Oh, yeah. Normally, normally we rush out of here to get something. I was enjoying that song, Lighting the Void. Um, lots of uh, guitar action in that one. Did you actually? Yes, I actually played guitar in that. No fake oh, guitars. so apropos of nothing here, um, today you and I, well, at least I, made a concerted effort to create some videos for space boy music using stock stuff mm -hmm. but um i these songs are off the the end of the beginning your mm -hmm. last and latest album mm -hmm. so maybe not the last album, well but... i mean it's the last one released yeah so as i was listening we we You've got however many, what, 17 tracks or whatever, how many on there. And we divided it down the middle. You took eight, I took eight, or whatever. So I've got them working on my set, right? And I'm listening to it because I put it in the video and I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, crap, this is some good music. And it just like, it's the first time it hit me that I really sat down and listened to the songs on off your latest release. By the way, we're talking about this spaceboymusic.com all free music all downloadable no gimmicks no things all he does is he asks you please don't use it in your projects or your corporate stuff without asking him for permission because he'll work with you um but you know if you want to use it in your powerpoint or something oh. or you do visit just yeah. give us a give, give us him a and i a don't quick, have, i don't have a problem with you sharing it with mm -hmm. people to kind of spread the word of yeah. sbu you know sbm um, and, uh, yeah, I just, you know, since it's free, I, the only clause I ask is that, uh, hit him up at spaceboy at spaceboyuniverse.com if you would like to use it in something mm -hmm. and he'll, he'll have a little discussion with you. He's pretty cool about it. It's pretty laid back. Um, so, you know, or, Hey, do you need some original music or score for your project? Why not contact Spaceboy? He'll work with you. Maybe you could pay him in potato chips or something. I mean. You know, or Guitar Center gift cards. That's that, you know, he's willing to negotiate Space Boy at SpaceBoyUniverse.com. That's his email. Contact him about projects. He, he's he got, he's multi-talented, not just music. He could, he could probably fix your audio, clean it up for you, um, you know, mm -hmm. cut you a simple video. It's, you know, he's multi-talented, so check him out online. So, anyway... So we're back, and we've been kind of putting this off because this is not exactly a fun topic, but it is a hot-button topic, and we want to try to work this out between us and, you know, figure out what's really going on if we can. And we're talking about Gillette, the best a man can get, as long as he's not toxic. So, can you sum up what we're talking about, Space Boys? Gives you that gives you time to talk. <laughs> well, we're talking about the uh, Gillette has put out a new ad, um, and and in this ad, is, it, it's kind of I guess we've talked about virtual, virtual. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. Okay. Well, see, that's why I hate when you try to dictate the the pl the map, and I don't know what we're you know. Well, basically. We're not trying to get to the meaning of it. We're, we're talking about what is the video? What's in the video? What did the video say on the surface? Well, the video Just on summon. the surface is basically that men uh, need to take a proactive view of uh, um, not, uh, you know, w whether it be bullying or, in other words, uh, we're, we're, we're bringing up young boys um, that are not uh, more sensitive to things like bullying and um, cat calling and like well around the Me Too movement mm -hmm. and, and so in essence that's what you know and very uh, you know boiled down um, the meaning of this video. So this video showed footage that I guess Gillette. Um, made themselves along with some like news footage but when i first watched it like the first few seconds i was like they kept showing these really clean shaven men and i think 
are they trying to say men with facial hair are toxic? But then they did show men with facial hair. I'm like, okay, well, okay, that must not be it. But that was what I was getting from it. It's just so uh, I th- bizarre. I like it. I, to, to me, me, to me, the, the showing all these men that do not have any hair on their face. I mean, it's kind of funny because, you know, you're talking about men. They did have both. Uh, the company that, you know, to shave, right? Um, but <laughs> yes, yes. I th- I looked at it as men who have been demasculated. 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 Thank you. Um, and, you know, might as well shave off his uh, manhood. Frank and beans there, you know. and. Uh, I, well, that's where I was going. But then they did show some guys that had full beards and, mm-hmm. you know, goatees. So I think maybe they had just enough presence of mind to get both sides in there. So I don't understand what they mean by toxic masculinity. Do they mean masculinity? Now, I, I, I looked at some articles. Some articles say um, for both sides. Now, here's my question. Are all men toxic if you're a man? Are you, are, are you masculine if you are a man? Does this include straight, gay, and people who identify as men or just a certain type of behavior? Well, can, considering the perspective of every time they talk about um, men being toxic, uh, I don't think most women want a man that's like, um, you know, less man. Does that make sense? Well, I think I don't think you can quantify it as all women want that because not all women are straight and then okay, not well, all women want. Well, first off, don't know. even get me to go down the path of all these different genders. Right. And, that's and I know. That's a big one. I'm talking um, about the good old plus minus men, right. women you in this have conversation. A, his, a history, a giant history coming back from the dawn of man, kind, humankind, the dawn of humankind for how. A man has behaved historically, Mm -hmm. how we've perceived, especially starting in this country, like World War One and two. There's a certain mindset we have about men and men being masculine, a manly man. And then, you know, uh, men being the breadwinner tradition. That's a historic thing that goes way back to the dawn of time. Right. And so we've built these stereotypes and we've built these ideas around what it is to be a man, what it is to be masculine, what it is to be successful, maybe, as a man. Like, a successful man or a good man has these traits and does not have these. Um, This is a a can of worms topic, right? Mm -hmm. This could go, I mean, can you imagine discussing this at my workplace? Holy crap, I work at a university. so this one article I read, they, what they what they believe Gillette is targeting here is violence, sex, and aggression, and where I guess the implication there is that violence, sex, and aggression is uh, the domain of a man, which I would argue, no, it's not. So I don't know what prompted this, other than you know it starts with Harvey Weinstein and then Kevin Spacey, and then you have your local news incidences with you know harassment and then teachers doing things inappropriate with students and so we live in that world now right Mm -hmm. so this article argues that putting the word toxic in front of masculinity in no way includes all men but okay how do you define a man is it the genitalia is it the attitude? Is it the behavior? Is it all of it? So this, you can, you know, you can just unravel this and unravel it and unravel it and just go down, down, down. I would argue there's such a thing as toxic feminism or femininity. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, what we're saying is there's a set of behaviors we don't like and it's toxic. Well, that goes both genders. And, and, That's and, both genders. And this oh, is, good Lord. And this is what I was talking about. Sorry, chat. Uh, talking about uh, with you as far as from the woman's angle of what we're uh, dealing with this commercial. A woman projecting into... A woman directed the Gillette commercial. Yes. yes. And, is that what you're saying? Yes. And so it, it's her perspective of what a man should be. 
And so, and I'm going to have to roll my eyes at that. Um, so this one woman thinks this way. We're all supposed to get on board with it. Um, now you had shared a video with me, and I watched it right before the mm-hmm. our broadcast about the controversy and the backlash where it screenshot some tweets from pseudo celebrities, everyday people. And um, this is one guy. It's like I'm throwing away my Gillette razor. I've had it for 18 years. It's been through me through this, through that, through the other. And he goes, but now it's telling me, Gillette's telling me I'm a bad person, so I'm throwing away my razor. So people are taking this to mean all men are bad. Or if you're a man and you do these behaviors, you're a bad person. Some of that probably is bad, but um, what what got me was watching this Gillette video. It showed two boys, young boys, mm-hmm. wrestling outside during like a picnic or something. Right. They were just wrestling. Boys will be boys. I don't think that's toxic. I don't think that's a problem. Now, if one of those boys had made a fist and started hauling off and beating the other child, that's different. But wrestling... In itself, I don't believe that's aggressive and toxic. Um, if that's so, should we remove wrestling from high school and middle school sports curriculum? Should we take it out of the Olympics? Should we get rid of Hulk Hogan and the WWE or F? WWF? Mm-hmm. Um, how far do you take this crap, you know? Um, I understand the boys will be boys has been like to forgive certain types of behavior that you can't change. I know a lot of growing up, you know, how boys kind of, they're, you're good friends, but you hit each other because that's how you deal with things. Maybe that's not ideal, but I don't have kids, so I don't have to deal with that, thank God. But, uh, so I don't, I don't understand this video and what they're trying to say. Uh, sexual violence is bad. Yes, I get that. Uh, uh, being mean to somebody for the sake of doing it is bad. Yeah, bullying is bad, but I just don't. I don't know what the, the bigger issue is that they're saying. Why are they focusing on men? Why is Gillette saying toxic masculinity when women? I guess there's a there's a there's a word for toxic femininity, and it starts with a B. So, uh, they're saying women are not capable of this. I read an article that said um some guy wrote that well the reason men have problems is because of women (laughs) yeah um hold on i've got that article up here just a minute okay some guy called frank Pittman investigated this concept back in the 90s and he says toxic masculinity resulted from women raising boys without the presence of male role models. And so he blames women for toxic masculinity. Sorry about that. Uh, I think that's kind of a load of crap there. Um, So if we have toxic masculinity, women are to blame for it, this guy says, Pittman. Uh, Again, that's crazy, but... I'm trying to I'm trying to pull out the relevant things here. Um, not every example of toxic masculinity is as obvious or extreme as the standard bearers of it. Um, well, well, here, let me throw something at you. Um, you know what gets me is that, you know, as a young man coming up, I was taught to be uh, polite to to women, like hold a door open for a woman. But nowadays, it's like if you hold a door open for a woman, a woman's going to yell at you like, why are you holding the door open for me? I can get the door myself. You know. I think you should get a free reign to slap those people. <laughs> I I look. I could, as a woman, I see both sides of that. One, I'm I'm at the age where when I was younger, it kind of was expected that you as a man do that. Mm-hmm. You hold. I think in this day and age, if you're first and you got the door, you should be holding the door open. For anyone behind you, man, woman, or child, sure. that's courtesy. I, that's I, not taking power away from you. It's called kindness. Right. And um, sometimes, and I, I, I want to use my fist with kindness. You somehow, know? some women, yes, some have 
looked at that as like they're being uh, devalued as a person. And they and this is where this tox, tox, toxic toxic attitude so, is coming from. So they're they're mistaking basic common courtesy and kindness with r- removal of their power. And I'm like, your own door. So um, when I'm at work, right, and I'm on an elevator, and there's other people on it, and there's males on it, and they get off before me, there is that old fashioned mentality of like you little so and so. Mm-hmm. Because these are all younger, you know, they're students. Right. But I'm like, I'll just let it go. On the other hand, I look at it like, look, they went ahead and got out of your way. Look at it like that. Just they went on their way and they're not in your life anymore. So I just like, it just depends on the mood I'm in. But um, this is the, remember this old, I don't know if this is a debate or concept, chivalry is dead and women killed it. Mm-hmm. You remember that's, that? Yeah, it was, that's a, absolutely Is that like a Bill true. Burr routine or something? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I yeah. mean, Bill so, Burr has a lot of things that yeah. are spot on. Chivalry's dead and women killed it because because of what you just said. You, oh, well, you're holding the door open for me. You took away my power to keep the door open for myself. So it's just... And, then, la- and then later on in that video, there's a, a woman who bypasses this guy and he starts to like walk toward her like... Uh, you know, because first he's like, you could see that he's like, ooh, she's attracted. I like to to talk he's to her. Follow her and, and then, start something. Huh? And then this other guy says, "Oh no, bro, don't don't do this. Don't don't go." Who does that? Do, I mean, do guys do that? I mean, no. Yeah. I'm like, it's like, hey, there you go. Go check her out. You know, get, so, get, get her digits. So if you Google traits of masculinity, you're mm-hmm. not going to find easy examples or definitions because mm-hmm. what makes a man? I don't know. All I can tell you is being brought up, you know, my perspective. See, my dad was a biker. When I say biker, he rode a Harley, uh, had a beard, uh, his hair was long. I mean, he was definitely a product of the uh, the hippie generation, right? And so there was something that's uh, uh, just okay. cool uh, uh, that I remember of my dad riding his Harley and the wind blowing in his hair and... I mean, he was just cool. You're saying that's a very manly image to you. Yeah, to me, yeah. It's like, you know, riding a bike and then, uh, and of course, uh, him, you know, the women he would hang out with and, uh, um, you know, the attractive ladies, they were like, ooh, he, he rides a bike, you know, he's a biker kind of thing. Well, I know you just rolled your eyes at that, but <laughs> it's like, uh, what? It, uh, well, okay, here's, here's, here, let me throw this at you. You, you, I don't think you've answered what. I was gonna. Uh, as far as what your perspective of a man, I mean, I know you're married to me, but uh, I'm afraid even you're a traditional man. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> you're a man in traditional sense. On a, how to quantify that? Um, well, one, I married you, so that says something good about you as a man. Okay. You had things I like. You had you have certain traits that remind me of my dad, which is not. Not an icky thing. It's a good thing. Um, I, I look at it as it honor, brings comfort to you. Loyalty, uh, trustworthiness, caring. Let's see what else. Creative, talented, thoughtful. I don't see those as masculine or feminine. It's human. It's mm-hmm. human. You've got the traits that I want to be around all, well, 60% of the time. The rest of the time I want to go read. So let's just put it that way. Is it like that picture that uh, Bob just posted? I didn't see what Bob posted. Yeah, that's that's your dad there. Um, so let me let me read this this crazy thing. So there's this guy who did a study. He's a researcher. Why the initial why Joel Wong and his colleagues published this study results in 2016 in which they found that sexism is bad for men's health. And they identified 11 typically masculine traits that are harmful to men's mental health. But this study made no distinction between masculinity and toxic masculinity. So that wasn't even on the table in the study. So these traits, these 11 traits were uh, among them were the desire to win, the need for emotional control, risk-taking, violence, power over women, disdain for homosexuality, and uh, some other things, too. Uh, Those are just, like, I guess maybe your top ones they found. Uh, Just 
baffling. Uh, so the, the 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 need to win is a bad thing. You definitely have that. Well, yeah, I'm a Scorpio. I, I it's in my nature to and want to. It's not an issue most of the time for me i don't notice it it's that the only time i notice it along with aggression and possible violence and risk taking and the need for control is when you're behind the wheel of a car that's when i'm like that's if anything's toxic it's you driving uh, i'm a product by nature meaning that uh, i live in houston and well you know it brings it out it but brings, still it brings it out um so this is just such, such a weird article I'm looking at. Um, extreme gender stereotypes are harmful because they don't allow people to fully express themselves and their emotions. Well, yeah, that's what a stereotype is. It's, it's a box that you put everyone in and it's not applicable to everyone. So I would say that neither is toxic masculinity because you're a man doesn't necessarily mean you have these behaviors. Doesn't mean you're gonna, I think Gillette wants you to be aware if you have them and, and act accordingly. But on the other hand, who died and made Gillette your daddy, your mommy, you know, or your, your guardian of your behavior? That's the other thing that kind of sets people off. So um, I like this shifting attitudes about the nature of gender and a move away from binary conception of it and from gender stereotypes typified by mad men era toxicity. That's the 1950s appear to be the way forward away from toxic masculinity and the societal pressures that inspire some men to prove their manliness by acting out in ever increasingly violent, oppressive, racist, misogynistic, homophobic, and transphobic ways. Okay. I agree that those last things are bad, but human nature is human nature. You try to pull all this out and we're just going to be a bunch of bland drones that all think alike, all look alike, all in, and then, then we're going to be like gray aliens. Yeah. And then we'll just be these little worker bees that have no thoughts and you can't have the good without the bad. You won't notice the difference. And it just, it would be nice if some of these things would be less prevalent. That would be nice. Racism. We could probably work on homophobia and transphobia. Yeah. Misogyny would be great, but as far as violence and oppression, I think those are going to be with us because it's in our nature. And I don't know how you change human nature. Now, so we've had that discussion about that. It's, we're up against the break, but what we want to tell you is this is all possibly posturing by Gillette, and it is an example of what Spaceway tried to say at the beginning was something called virtue signaling which is a, a modern habit of saying that you have virtue by merely expressing disgust or favor for certain political ideas cultural happenings happenings events or even the weather so Gillette says toxic masculinity is bad aren't we a great company that's what virtue thing is it's like I'm for immigrants coming into the country. Like and, and, I'm showing my support. Like, well, did you give money? Or are you housing an immigrant? And, and, did you do this? Like, no, I'm just saying I support it. And it's that attitude where it alienates people that are longtime customers who are going to hurt them where it counts, and that's in the wallet. So, you know. Kind of wonder what it means. So I know we're up a break, but mm -hmm. uh, we might do a little more summing up about this when we come back. Okay. You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada. Greetings, space cadets. Let's see what's in the sky tonight in the Space Boy Universe. 
Tonight, in the eastern sky, we have Space Boy Universe rising above the horizon in glorious splendor. And in the west, we can see Solanus Majoris, which is visible at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, just below the K-28 belt. So keep your eyes on the sky and listen to Space Boy Universe. I'm Solaris Lurvin, and I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lana. All right, we're back. <laughs> so, just to sum up, we were talking about that I think, I don't know what, what Gillette's trying to do with all this, but um, it could be an absolutely brilliant maneuver on their part just to draw, because controversy, at least, the thing about controversy is controversy is you're talking about it you're talking about Gillette what's Gillette they have products they have razors they have they make my husband's armpits smell amazing I don't know if he's going to stop doing that now yeah I, I constantly roll uh you know look over and then all of a sudden Solana has rolled over and her face is in my armpit because she's like uh intoxicated by my pit smell well, he uses some really good smelling uh, underarm deodorant, and I guess Gillette is the one who is the one brand you buy. Um, but it could just be a brilliant maneuver on their part to get attention. And, you know, Gillette, the best a man can get, they've had that slogan for 
how many they have had that slogan for so long <laughs> that's iconic yeah so maybe they're looking for a way to capitalize on their slogan and bring it into this new but hurt culture that i'm you know I, I have dubbed but space boy i think and i are on the same page with this we think it is a part of virtue signaling now i want to explain that a little more a little more so i'm on spectator.co.uk and there's an article entitled i invented virtue signaling now it's taking over the world this is james bartholomew he writes articles online for the spectator um so he coined the phrase so virtue signaling has this is something that's been going on for years and years and years mm -hmm. and years he just happened to put a term to the action he says to my astonishment and delight the phrase virtue signaling has become a part of the english language he coined that phrase in an article he wrote the spectator which he describes the way in which many people say or write things to indicate they are virtuous sometimes it's quite subtle so you say i hate this thing or i hate this thing or i hate trump or you know you're telling people that you're you're admirable you're non-racist or you're left wing or you're right wing or you're open-minded meaning you're virtuous and you're better than the rest of us so that's your way of seeming like you support something but it's actually i'm better than you are that's the real statement behind what you're doing or saying um so this guy has watched the virtue signaling term uh get into everyday language of political discourse it's now in urban dictionary it's now in regular dictionaries so the phrase has gone through the roof since he was first put it out there um but that's where it comes from it's uh, a british blogger uh, it's been used so much because it fulfills a need and explains what people are doing especially on places like Facebook when people and I'm not trying to call anyone out I'm not trying to put it like if you change your icon or something and say you support this or the victims of that you're saying I'm for this because I'm a good person but I'm like the further discussion of that would be like did you donate money to the cause have you done something to further that cause i mean have you given your time or your money your efforts have you did, did you did, saw uh c created the cure for cancer yeah so it's not just enough to say you support it you put your money where your mouth is um so you're saying you support something you're against something is just saying like well i'm better than you are <laughs> that's virtue it's like hey i am i'm virtuous look at me look at me so that's why i stay out of that crap on social media if you want to know my opinion you're going to have to pick up your phone and call me or meet me face to face because i'm not going to tell you anything meet me unless outside. unless we're talking about sharepoint or something i will give you or skype or you know or any microsoft product i will you know go to town on that but that's what i think space boy and i believe all this gillette garbage is i mean I think actually, we're on the same actually page i think there. i think i could sum it up um for those who know who red foreman is um oh, from I, that 70 show yeah from that 70 so uh, i think i'm getting to that point uh, where um you know i just think that the the world is just changed in ways that it just frustrates me well like this points out celebrities who publicly express panic about the environment without knowing much science virtue signaling um, they say this is kind of like started in the 1960s um when cultural leftism overthrew conservatism mm -hmm. of the 1950s because yeah you know the 60s were the flower that was definitely the, the flower children the, the hippies that liberalism took over mm -hmm. you know from the moral upright starched button 50 so from the what we call the greatest generation mm -hmm. so um the 60s was more about rage than reason and they passed their anger down to the millennial offspring 
So uh, virtue signaling is not about journalism. It's a way to vent your anger. It's uh, Bartholomew, who coined it, says it's noticeable how often virtue signaling consists of saying you hate things. It is camouflage. The emphasis on hate distracts from the fact you are really saying how good you are. Let's say you've got a guy who says, I care about the environment more than most people do, or I care about the poor more than others. Your vanity and self-aggrandizement would be obvious. Anger and outrage would disguise your boastfulness. So um, it's just people saying I'm better than you are, basically. So, and I think Gillette might be on that, you know, on that bandwagon. But anyway, so you've got anything left to say on this topic or over there? No, I think um, the picture I threw in or our chat room sums it all. Okay. So want to go to some fun stuff. Let's go back to some pop culture. Oh. And um, we, you and I have watched some videos lately. Some? About Endgame. Avengers Endgame, the right. next Avengers movie. But some? I didn't count them, all right? No, no, no. I, so, I, 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 I'm joking here because uh, it's kind of like 24-7 or that I constantly pour over different videos. I don't mind that. It's the constant Star Wars Orville stuff. I'm like, where are my headphones? Uh, you mean Star Trek? No, Star Wars and the Orville. Okay, I well, I cannot it. help it because I have a wife that doesn't want to hear what I hear me complain. You can which, complain, but I just don't have anything to say. Which is kind of say. funny because it's like, uh, I don't watch them. you know, in a lot of ways, you mentioned I'm lot like your dad. Mm. And, and you know, this is my politics kind of thing uh, as far as... Uh, uh, Star Wars and the Orville and stuff like that. Star mm -hmm, Trek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, well, here's some theories about how they're going to heal everything, or bring everyone back, or fix the timeline, or recover from the snap, the great snapping. Right? Okay. Here's one. Here's an idea. Stopping Thanos right before. For the snap so what they could do is stop the snap moments before it happens I mean everything we saw up to it including the majority of the infinity wars would have happened and it would make sense in the fictional world where the Avengers would not necessarily change too much and it would avoid huge unintended consequences but if their goal is to change the time as little as possible this would be the safest option so they would have to get to Thanos right before he snaps, so Thor would have to take his head off, you know, instead of putting it in his chest. So, <laughs> another thing is they were, it happens, <clears throat> the snap, but they reverse it immediately. So, they're saying, okay, so Doctor Strange let, quote unquote, Thanos win because he said it was the only option because he saw 14 million outcomes and only one of them they're victorious so we're assuming i guess that dr strange put us on the path where we win and we've got to wait for it to unravel so if they let it happen because it was necessary it might be a bad idea to try to stop it entirely if they're trying time traveling capers uh, and trips to different dimensions help them amass their own collection of infinity stones because they have access to those stones give you access to all kind of things and then there's the whole quantum realm and you've got Captain Marvel and Ant-Man mm -hmm. out there so the Avengers could use the gauntlet on their own to snap his victims back because I, I read in some other article that everyone that got snapped now I don't know if this is this is comic book comic book lore not necessarily mcu in the comic books if you got snapped you got you you're not dead you're living your life inside that stone mm -hmm. one of the stones like a parallel universe, universe. it's really weird so you're, or maybe that's the afterlife but so you're not gone gone 
So it, the only way to win is to pay that ultimate price. Or here's another thing, they can reverse it later. Let it all happen. Uh, watch, we watched Thanos watching the sunset on his grateful universe with his destinies fulfilled. Um, his life's work has been attained. His children are all gone. He's the universe's greatest monsters. No one's fighting him. He's got nothing left to lose. So let's say the Avengers regroup. Captain Marvel is aided now by the Avengers and they're able to defeat him later. So it's a rebooted universe with the new people and the ones that are gone are gone. Or they don't stop and they don't reverse the snap, but they still manage to bring everyone back. So um, Red Skull said the Soul Stone has a certain wisdom. That was ambiguous. So maybe there's something more to the Soul Stone than that, that can get us out of the situation. So again, what if they're trapped inside? What if Gamora is that soul stone and everyone who got snapped is inside the soul stone? And all you got to do is break it, open it, reverse it. I don't know how, how you get it at. So what would the price be if the Avengers, what would they have to pay to free trillions of lives from that soul stone? Well, the, you know, the possible theory is that Tony's going to build his own gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And they're going <laughs> to, they're going to, he's going to supposedly the time travel angle is they're going to try to acquire the stones before, uh, Thanos does mm -hmm. and, and basically snap everybody back. So <laughs> I love that gif of Paul Rudd that yeah. Bev posted uh -huh. where he's being silly. He's coming down the stairs. I really think with Ant-Man, both Ant-Man movies, they just filmed Paul Rudd. They gave him some lines, but he's just being Paul Rudd. He's not being Scott Lang. I, I like just being I like Ant-Man because, you know, you get, for example, you get the Avengers and it's kind of serious and... Uh, he's got know, humor. You and, can't and hide He brings it. the humor aspect to uh, the MCU. Whereas Thor brings humor in trying to be sincere but he's he gets it wrong and he's out of touch so mm -hmm. um yeah now so whatever happens in endgame right happens and that's going to be released in april well on down the line coming this year i guess uh, is well it? before you've got uh, captain, captain marvel. marvel will come out but the big question now is the thing that's a buzz is when does Spider-Man Far From Home take place? Is it set before mm -hmm. or after Endgame? Because exactly. he was snapped. So that's the big controversy. Because when you're watching the trailer, you don't get the impression that, uh, hey, you know, the uh, we've just come back from the snap. And, um, you know, you don't see, you know, people would kind of still be talking about it, you know. So, yeah, there's a, a rumor that uh, it kind of might have take place before the snapping and uh, versus after the snapping. And because, uh, you know, there's a scene where it shows his passport. And, and they deliberately left the time off of it so they wouldn't give anything it, away. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, yeah, so you and I have watched, like I said, video after video of, of people trying to theorize on what's what. So, Spider-Man Far From Home is set after the events of Endgame, we think, uh, because the trailer has dropped, and the one that I saw gave a lot more, uh, dang, here's Nick Fury, mm -hmm. you know, I can't believe he's in Spider-Man's universe, so Spider-Man did die in Infinity War, he got snapped. Um, it's the only death that made me want to cry and scream. Go, that's uh, not fair. I don't want to go. No, that, that's, that's like, I was the rest thinking. of you like, yeah, okay, I can live in a world without you. But um, the timeline's getting confusing. Uh, Captain Marvel is based in 1995. So I guess there's going to be some coming forward at some point in that movie, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, we're also getting a Black Widow prequel, which I guess won't have anything to do with this. Uh, so it's the speculation is where 
is far from home taking place with, in regards to Infinity War and Endgame? That's the million dollar question. When is this set? Because we want to know, does that give spoilers for Endgame? But it's going to be Captain Marvel, Endgame, and then later in the summer, it'll be Spider-Man. So we'll probably have our questions answered before Spider-Man is released, mm-hmm. right? So, um, oh, I hate it when they put text in that light gray color. Oh, that's just awful. You know, one thing I did like about the Spidey uh, Man movie is that uh, uh, Marissa Tomei's character, uh, she knows that he's Spider-Man now. and Well... If you saw the last Spider-Man it, it, movie, at the very end, was, she, she walks funny. in on him when he's taking his mask off. And, I'm and like, she does a WTF. And, uh, yeah, he could have said he's cosplaying, you know. But yeah. um, So according to Kevin Feige, Feige, never know, Spider-Man Far From Home will explore the repercussions of both Avengers, Infinity War, and Endgame. Oh, that's clear. He stressed this is a deliberate decision on Marvel's part, given that the MCU will be dramatically reshaped because of Infinity War and Endgame. Peter Parker. Marvel chose Peter Parker as a character people could empathize with and believed he was perfectly suited to introduce viewers to the post-Phase 3 MCU, which is why his movie is coming out two months after Endgame. And that also because... Dang, he's just cute as a button. You know? Um, he's likable. He's he's English. Um, but that movie itself seems interesting. Seems like they're going to introduce a new character who may... Mysterio. Mysterio, who looks like he's there to help, but I think he may actually be fabricating the villains for mm-hmm. whatever reason. To make him look like yeah. a, a, a hero. But I'm really intrigued by the fact that Peter goes over there with his high school um, class, class yeah. mm-hmm. for just a simple field trip to Europe. And then Nick Fury is like, Sucks hey, hey you're here. We need you. Right. And he's like, I don't, because we don't know when this takes place. I don't know if this Spider-Man in this movie is the one that got anointed, quote unquote, by Tony Stark. Hey, you're an Avenger now, kid. Or if this is another timeline where Nick Fury's like, I'm bringing you in, don't matter what Tony says, you know. Mm-hmm. So, because the suit Spider-Man had in Infinity War was Tony Stark's. What he's wearing in Far From Home, don't know where that came from. If that's a Stark Industries thing, or did Nick Fury's people give him that? Did S.H.I.E.L.D. give him that? I think that's a Stark creation, but, um, you know. So... Uh, the deaths at an in Infinity War are probably going to stick. That's what the fans are thinking. Um, but then you've got this thing where Iron Man doesn't have many resources left to get home. So the, the bottom line is Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., and Chris Hemsworth are at the end of their con- contracts with Marvel, and I think they're done. Mm-hmm. So, the only way to bring them back is different timeline where different characters still plays. You got somebody that's playing Thor, but it's not our Thor. It's not our Captain America. Um, the ones that are booked for sequels are Spider-Man, Black Panther, and Doctor Strange, even though all three got snapped. But you can play with a timeline in these movies. You can have a prequel to Black Panther. You can have, you know, an alter, you know, just goes on and on and on. So... It doesn't tell us anything. <laughs> That's what we've learned is we don't know. It's just, it's a mystery. All I know is it's building up to be a good show. Um, Tom Holland is cute as a button. You just want to adopt him. Um, why Marvel is avoiding confirming the timeline. Mm-hmm. Why would they? It keeps you talking about it. It's part of marketing. I mean, you know, uh, Accept these deaths and you'll be able to move on to the next stage of grief, co-writer Christopher Marcus says. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. I 
I'm interested. I'm more interested in this than I am of any Star Wars film. Okay. So, oh, you're back. Okay. K20 is back. That's good. Um, she was worried about you, K. Yeah. Yeah. Dino, we're doing, I'm going to try to find the blood moon tomorrow, but who knows if we're, our neighborhood's going to be really poised in a good position for that. But um, who knows? Let's see. But I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of jazzed about the whole thing. But here's the thing: as much as I enjoy these films and I like them, if for some reason I miss seeing one of them, I will be okay. <laughs> if I never see the next Star Wars film, life will go on. I'll be okay. I will get through. See, you're not a true fan. No, I'm not. See, the thing is that. Uh I grew up on this, so it's a part of my childhood. Now I'm adult, you know. Um, I still, it's like re revisiting my childhood, an old friend. Uh, I'm a true fan of books. Let's just put it that way. But um, I have things that I'm passionate about on that level that you are. I just can't think of what they are right now. Man, that took a long time to make that tiramisu. Um, I'm trying to think. I think the things I'm interested in, I don't want to share with anybody on air. Or she doesn't want to share with me. You you already know. You already know. Uh, Are you talking about your fan fiction stuff? I'm, it's just mostly it's to do with reading, but um, I've got someone I can talk to about it. Oh, Le Leanne. So it's not like I need this format. It's not like you know, she needs a husband to talk to. Well, you're not interested, and I respect the fact you're not interested, so I don't bother you with it, right? You still bring it up. Enough to annoy you? Um, enough that I bring up Star Wars. Okay, well, if you get to bring that up, I get to bring that up. So, double annoyance. So, there. But, anyway... um trying to find more content for you or maybe i'll find some more content during Kay's the break. inviting you over for a slice of tiramisu are the lady fingers fresh Ooh, how the quantum eraser rewrites time we have to check that out this is not mcu this is real life can we adjust reality oh it's a video i'm not watching a video <laughs> screw that um Oh, did you hear about this Harvard professor sticks his claim we were visited by an alien probe in 2017? I haven't heard about that. This is like the third time I've seen this. Is this that asteroid that looks like a cigar floating yes, in space? Yes, yes. Um, I don't know if this is a rendering someone did of it. Mm -hmm. It sounds too exciting to be true. Um, a mysterious object entered our solar system in 2017, caused puzzlement and amazement. No one knew where it came from why it had such a striking shape one expert quote unquote however was certain it was an alien probe and i can't even pronounce that it starts with an o omua munua i don't, do not know what it's called um, yeah, it sounds like a hawaiian name yeah it does so abraham loeb the harvard professor studied it and said it was clear it's a mysterious alien technology and the basis for his claim among other things says the object had increased in speed and changed its trajectory on its own or did something hit it i don't know critics leave that professor cold um they say it's incorrectly shaped it'd have to be accelerated by pressure of solar radiation it would have to be flat as a pancake thick as a millimeter and uh Loeb concluded that it's solar cell whose technology is not yet on Earth. He's saying, yeah, but it's alien tech. <laughs> you know, that's why it works. So, um, poor guy. <laughs> I mean, it is an interesting shape. Yeah. It's like a sliver of something. Mm -hmm. uh, if, it, if it struck Earth, it would do some major damage. Yes, but I think it was just, I don't know where in our... On the outskirts of our solar yeah, system. It was just uh, somewhere to be observable, but not a problem, mm -hmm. apparently. So, mm -hmm. um.
Hey, look at that. It's Ronnie. We're at the bottom of the hour, and we're getting ready to go into the power hour of our show right after this break. Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada. Get your game on on Space Boy Universe. Level up with Space Boy Universe. No quarters, no problems. Play it at Space Boy Universe. Listening to Space Boy Universe. 
Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lana. All right, we're back. <laughs> and I guess you caught Sir Lana's need to... Yeah, I wasted it. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a lot better than I was last Saturday, let me tell you right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't get into why. <laughs> it's bad. Did you finish off the antibiotic? I'm taking everything that's in that bottle. I don't know how many was in there, but it was more than five days worth something, and that'll finish it, right? Mm-hmm. So I've got one more last piece of interesting things for you, because this is, this is music and tech together. Mm-hmm. So you're a fan of David Bowie. Mm-hmm. He has, uh, he's no longer with us in this world, but he still continues to amaze and entertain, even though he's not with us. David Bowie blows minds with augmented reality. There is a new app called David Bowie Is. And this guy is writing this article. He says, David Bowie visited my home on his birthday this week. He sang Life on Mars in my dining room. He performed a mime in my on my front porch. He showed me the handwritten lyrics to Ashes to Ashes while I was sitting on my sofa, thanks to this augmented reality app. So it's kind of groundbreaking, called David Bowie Is. as a museum exhibition. It was released on iOS and Android platforms on January 8th. And that would have been his 72nd birthday. Hmm. So... This guy says he went to the David Bowie exhibit in Chicago's museum in 2014, and he was moved to tears by that. So he downloaded the app, you know, years later, and he wondered if they could possibly recreate that wonder and awe, or would it tarnish his memory? So he says they they did it. When you open the app, you explore 25 rooms, and there's 400 objects from David Bowie's life including handwritten notes for songs, costumes rendered in 3D, images of stage sets, video. Gary Oldman narrates the different scenes. He kind of sounds like Bowie, he said, Mm -hmm. uh, such as how the BBC actually used Bowie's space oddity in its coverage of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Um, It's not just a progression of flat images and video. It is when you point your smartphone at a flat surface, the space in front of you is transformed. David Boy's songs fill your ears through spatial audio. Your dining room table dissolved into stars as as it played Space Odyssey, and it became a floating set piece for Diamond Dogs Tour, uh, obliterating his very reel of unpaid bills and junk mail. (laughs) So that space boy doing that sorry he says as my dining room became bathed in a mint green light as bowie sang life on mars this sounds really intriguing um this app takes you on a journey through his creative process how he collaborated with fashion designers artists and filmmakers Mm -hmm. bowie synthesized everything he saw heard read lived into his own vision you learned how he took all this stuff and in the world of the 1970s and <coughs> fueled his sense of experimentation and adventure. Um, you can see his rough drawing for the album cover of Diamond Dogs. It became shocking and memorable images through the cl- collaboration of artist Guy Peelart. I don't know how you say his name. Um, you can actually just lose yourself in Bowie's world with this app. Of course, it does it replace the experience of going to that museum and seeing that exhibition of his stuff. But mm-hmm. it's a technology-rich, updated experience to interact and see his music. And uh, he says, "I use the term record album deliberately. Be- actually, listening to a record album all the way through demands your attention, especially if you listen to a vinyl record, which entails unwrapping the album from sleeve." queuing it up on the turntable and turning it over midway through. Uh, when you listen to a record, you don't make fame and then the man who sold the world into digital background fodder for your morning exercise routine. So David Bowie is kind of functions like that vinyl record. You, you, you're totally in the experience. You have to give it your full attention. Mm-hmm. Because 
it's augmented reality with a soul. So apparently they got this right. So I'd like to check that out. So I'm clicking on it. Uh, David Bowie is real dot com. Go there and it will it has links to the App Store and Google Play. David Bowie is real dot com. And I'll stick that in both chats. Cool. In case you're a Bowie fan and you want to see what it's all about. Oh, cool. When I put it in our embedded chat, it put a lightning bolt next to the. <laughs> Pretty cool. But I thought that would be cool because you're a fan and I know you like Bowie and we like technology and all that good stuff. So. Cool. I tried to find some latest YouTube controversy, but the only thing I, I got is Logan Paul. Because when is he not causing problems mm -hmm. <laughs> saying he's going gay for a month and that led to a violent outcry of like you know home you know being gay is not a choice and i think it's i think it's logan just being young and stupid he doesn't know what he's saying and he doesn't understand the way he phrases things have these other meanings and consequences he's just this is the lesson pewdiepie had to learn PewDiePie had to learn this the hard way twice, and he had, I think what PewDiePie did is he grew up a little bit, and he learned that you got to watch what you say. Mm -hmm. you, you know that video of that little, little boy screaming, when will you learn that your actions have consequences? And he was all high-pitched and breaking. <laughs> I forget what he was upset about. He's upset about some older game, but every time... One of these controversies come, especially with the Pauls, it's Jake Paul or Logan Paul, their brothers. I think of that little kid on YouTube. When will you learn? Your actions have consequences. So that only reminded me of that mother that broke into their daughter's room and who didn't flush the Oh, that Scottish, that really mm. heavily accented Scottish is like mm. those who doesn't know how to flush after you've taken a bleep? And he goes, well, was it wasn't me. He goes, well, it was what he is. <laughs> Disgusting. And I'm like, parenting at its best. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let me grab something real quick here. We've had some weird weather today. It's, um, we yeah. had gusts up to 30 40 miles an hour today it was very bizarre so I wanted to just real quick the osi app for david bowie is uh it's 7.99 probably worth it mm -hmm. I, I might put that on my list to buy up for payday mm -hmm. probably worth it I'm, I'm seeing some of the, you know how osi gives you some previews Okay. Very, very cool stuff. I'm glad. Yeah, I think. See, I thought you'd be into that, and mm -hmm. I would like to. If you do down it, I'd like to see all that because I'm curious. Um, and quick weird news before we go. Mm -hmm. Texas couple hold wedding ceremony at Waterburger. Because oh, why not? I saw the picture of the cute couple. Uh, they did it yesterday on January 18th. A pair of Waterburger fans. Waterburger is a Texas staple. You, mm -hmm. If you don't have one, it's because you're not in Texas mm -hmm. um, or somewhere in the South. So they celebrated their love for each other at their favorite eatery by holding a wedding ceremony at the fast food restaurant. Jordan and Ariane Moore held their wedding there. Uh, she's in her dress. He's in a nice suit. And they did this at a Waterburger in San Antonio. Um they did have it at a traditional venue, but then they afterward they went to a Waterburger and got married for a second time, you know, because mm -hmm. I guess not everybody could go with them to the Waterburger. <laughs> she said uh, the bride says she was ex inspired by a friend's wedding. She says, I was craving Waterburger fries with gravy and a friend mentioned someone mm -hmm. got married in a Waterburger. So let's do it the way we wanted. We don't have room to talk. We were she, married at the Trek experience. She's a keeper, you know, fries with gravy. Mm. I would love to get some good fries, like like uh, McDonald's fries, and then take them over to Wendy's drive through get a chocolate Frosty, and dip them in the Frosty. You know, ever since they changed the Biggie fries to, to the uh, take a potato and slice it up, 
Um, they With just, skin on it. Yes. Um, I, I'm not a big fan. It's kind of like uh, Jack in the Box does the same thing. I, I don't like those kind Mm-mm. of fries. Jack in the Box. Is a- That's why I don't like uh, Five Guys Brothers or whatever it is. Five Guys Hanging Around Making Meat or something. <laughs> I, I don't know what the name of that thing is. Yeah, I don't like their stuff either. I can make a better hamburger than Five Guys. And I'm just one woman. So another kind of Texas news. This is Houston news, actually. Seven-year-old barber draws attention at Houston shop. A barber in training at a Houston shop is drawing attention due to her high level of skill, and she's only seven years old. Frankie Hernandez said his daughter, Alia or Alia, I'm not sure it's spelled, uh, pronounced, I'm sorry, has been watching him cut hair at his Houston shop since she was a toddler, being you know four years old. He taught her the right moves. And he, she's been watching him over time, and he guided her in the right direction with her hand movements. She, they told this to KTRK. She's skilled. Uh, she's, she's got an Instagram account, and she says cutting hair comes naturally to her. She said a fade is when you're cutting hair, and it shows the detail of your cut. She showed the technique, and she's been practicing it. Uh, her father said she's years away from being able to obtain a professional barber's license because of her age. But she's become a popular source of haircuts among family members and friends. She said uh, she's competed in barber competitions, which I didn't know were a thing, across the state. And her family is currently raising money to allow her to compete in nationwide events. So literally, you go, girl. I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, another tractor trailer has become wedged under a bypass. This is in Florida. No news there. Um, women twerk atop a moving vehicle on Missouri Highway because why not what else are you going to do in Missouri uh, did you see this I, I kind of saw this in passing so somebody made a big snowman really big snowman on their property really close to their house and a vandal decided to drive their vehicle into it to just be mean and run it over Turns out the bottom half of it was covering a tree stump that had been cut. <laughs> so that was that was serving as the base of the snowman, and you couldn't see that because they did a good job, right? Right. So, um, how bad did it mess the car? They built a nine foot snowman on his own property, on his yard, close to the house. Uh, Cody Lutz. Uh, this is in Kentucky, and his fiance Lucy and future sister in law got together and built this snowman. Uh, they built the built the base of the snowman over a large tree stump in their front yard to give it extra stability. Smart, you know. He noticed some tire tracks in his yard a few days after they built it. The tracks indicate someone tried to drive to the snowman, but was stopped by the stump. He said, "Instant karma. It's hilarious. You know, it goes on, goes around, comes around. It's good, and it's good ways and bad. So I guess everyone learns a valuable lesson here from Frosty." <laughs> I say, awesome, awesome. Awesome possum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Africa by Toto is playing on a loop in an African desert. Hmm. That sounds like a Mobius strip of craziness. So an artist set up an installation designed to use solar power to play Africa by Toto in a Nambian desert indefinitely. Max, oh, I don't even know this is a German name, Seidentoff, he's 27, He's a German Nambian artist. He's based in London. He set up a sound installation titled Toto Forever to play the 1982 song on a loop at an undisclosed location somewhere in the 1200 mile long Nambian Desert. Namib Desert. He says the solar batteries power on the installation's MP3 player and it's got six speakers. The desert itself is 55 million years old, making it the perfect spot for this installation. Hopefully the song will play just as long. Even though Africa by Toto was released in 1982, it's still very much a present in today's pop culture. It has been memed to death. Yes. And entire Reddit pages are dedicated to the song. Even a computer uh, picked it as like you went through a bunch of songs and picked it as the most... Um, playable song. It, the artist says, I was very intrigued by this and wanted to pay the song the ultimate homage and physically exhibit Africa in Africa. 
he will not reveal the exact location of the installation. He wants it to you to find it like a treasure that only the most loyal of Toto fans can find. Like, so if you're a loyal fan of the band Toto, you'll find it instantly. I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy, you know. So is it too soon for housekeeping? housekeeping? No, it's never too soon. Um, our guest, Ben Knight, uh... Was it, is it night? Like, you know, like a, a night of shining armor. I just want to make sure I, I'm saying yeah, this. Yeah, I think you are. Go to our. That's what, um. Toto. Yes. I bless. Yeah, Ben Knight. Um, he had an emergency tonight. That's why, uh, we do not, we did not have a guest tonight, but I think we did pretty good. What do you think, Solana? Considering I had no show prep. Um, you know, it's amazing that, uh, you, and I can actually get through a show without any prep. Well, it helps that we, we look at stuff during the week and we mm-hmm. occasionally converse before the show. It can, yeah, occasionally. She removes the curtain so, between us. Um, is he amenable to be rescheduled? Yes. Um, according to the email, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how uh, when we can rebook him. But uh, if you tune into next week, our guest will be Awakening Man. Eric, Eric uh, popular fade or not, uh, uh, over there on uh, Jimmy's show, he tunes in and converses over there a lot. Of course, we have a rich history with Eric ourselves, uh, mm-hmm. going back, going back to when we used to produce the Quantum Hologram Matrix show uh, with Reverend. Um, um, they got it right here. I've got his business card right here. Reverend John M. Polk, mm-hmm. author, lecturer, metaphysical minister. UFO alien researcher, mass media personality, and Reiki master. Mm-hmm. Just well, to I, name a few. You, you do that so well. Oh, but I have his business card in front of me, which I design? designed. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he even uses these. It's just not many of my business, but hope he's doing well. Mm-hmm. Hope uh, John's doing well. Yes. Maybe Eric will tell us. Yes. Uh, but it's going to be a great show because he's going to bring us up to speed with uh, Stan Romanek. Uh, apparently he's oh, been yeah? in touch with Stan, and uh, uh, I'm curious to get an update on that. Is Stan out or still in? Well, it sounds like he's out. Um, maybe uh, at home on probation, maybe or. Yeah. You and I still think he's innocent, and we're mm-hmm. not saying that to as a way to virtue signal. That's honestly how we feel. Nice way to tie in a uh, topic tonight. Um, but yeah, uh, we're prevary prev prev. prev- to uh, some information. Pretty, yeah. Thank you. That's all we're going to say. Uh, I was like, that stroke is kicking in again. Um, well, it's, it's getting near the end. So, yeah. So, Eric, next week, we'll let you know when our tonight's guest will come back. Um, and as always, I'm working on more guests to get uh, covered here. At the, I'm trying to pick a history topic. I think it's uh, time to do another history show. But, but we are coming up on... Black History Month and then March is Women's History Month. Although I think it should just be history and it should all be blended together mm-hmm. and we don't have to pick a month to focus well, on one. Well, I was kind of intrigued by maybe one or two of the topics you brought up. Yeah. Uh, maybe the Vietnam War or maybe even the Korean War. Yeah, because those were, one was before my time and one was I was just too young to understand. So I want to go back and learn it because these those two were not discussed anywhere in my education once again um once you got to the 20th century yes, it's just time ran out you're time graduating ran out. You, yeah it's the, the how do they pick what to teach kids because there's more because, history than there ever was because they start from the revolution of america and then make their way through civil war and then you got and, and, history. and i think that's why i got burnt out on the civil war is because so you, much of it because you get to the civil war and it seems to drag on and uh uh and they you know well the impact of it Mm -hmm. is still with us um that was a bad decision on behalf of the white white dude and uh we're still paying for it Mm -hmm. so um you know but uh yeah we'll we'll figure out what uh, a history topic will be soon you'll you'll be the first to know space cadets but uh yeah next week awakening man will be with us and we're looking forward to that conversation you know uh, Awakening Man does have a lot to say, so you know it should be for a good show. 
And, um, you know, so let's see what else. So, my, I was just joking because I was talking to my brother and he says he was looking at his son's, my nephew's history homework. And I'm like, we're talking about, gosh, every year it goes by, there's more history for kids to know, but how do they get it all? I guess they don't. So you want to find out, you got to go learn it on your own. Well, I'm surprised. Uh, I mean, in college, they break it into two parts. And um, you can take electives, you know, mm -hmm. you can take. If you're interested, you can actually uh, do it. In school, uh, you know, like high school, um, you know, I don't really recall uh, them breaking it into two parts because all I remember is it getting up to about mm -hmm. uh, the early part of the 20th century. World and history was in two parts. American history is in two parts, you know. Um, of course, then you have your obligatory state, whatever state you're currently living in, you've got to learn that state's history, like Texas history, Louisiana history. You have to do that. But, uh, mm -hmm. Um, I work at a university, so the, the topics that are available to for you to get as a course are much more interesting and relevant. Now, what they're teaching and what they're saying about it, I don't know. Hmm. So, okay, well, as always, we appreciate the Space Cadets for tuning in. Uh, we'll journey back out into the universe and bring you some interesting information. So join us next week, my friends, when we'll be live at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on SBU.com. Space Boy Universe is hosted by Space Boy and Sir Lana. Executive producer is Sir Lana. Associate producer is Lee Ann Cordes. Music production is Space Boy of SpaceBoyMusic.com. Special thanks goes out to Lee Ann K. K28. Dino, Solar's Blue Raven, Patrick Sporer, Bob and Beverly N. This has been a Space Boy Universe production. Support the universe by exploring Space Boy Universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. Sweet dreams Space Cadets. Universe on the SBU network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lotta.